supposed to go, but we did, but we can't go. We keep casting. We just can't leave. We said we were going to leave, but we oh. can't leave. We can't leave biting fish. Don't leave biting fish to go home. That's the number one rule. We cannot stay here till long. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but they better stop biting. I ain't leaving. I'm going to shake them off. <laughs> if you want to go, we can go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go either. I don't want to go. Who? But I, I do got to get off the water. I got to work on it. At what time? Like I'm late. So. Oh, you're late for You're going to be late for a while. I got to get this one in now. Woo! I'll take him. One of the most incredible days of fishing of my entire life. Leave when they stop biting. They won't stop biting. Well, I got to get my last fish. Dude. Okay. It's getting nicer out, though. The rain's still stopped, and we can stay a little longer. Are you trying to tell me to stand? You didn't want to take a picture of a five-and-a-half pounder? I, I've already got pictures. I just want to get the fish back in the water. It's time to go. Yes. Time to go. <laughs> I'm not casting. I'm not casting. Are you? I am. Well, no, come on, man. One more cast. We can go whenever now. So it's your call. We got to go. All right, let's pack up. We got to go. What time is it now? Probably 7. We got to go. Why? Because all of a sudden, no, I want to eat dinner. We'll get dinner somewhere. We got to get a good hotel, and that ain't here. We are not driving it in any. I don't want to drive in the morning after I make this last cast. I don't like that angle. What do you mean? I fished this. Fished all the angles a hundred times. I had to set, dude. That's a giant. Is it? I don't care if I catch one or not. I'm not all taking any more casts. This is the end, guys. No matter what happens. No matter what. Last cast. Oh, now we're making another last One more. Cast. This is it. No matter what. Absolutely, positively. Right there. Where'd you go? I'm fine with that cast. Where'd you go? I'm just right out here. This is the last cast. No matter what happens. Okay, that was the last cast. I just had one on. Well. Got him. Got him. Oh. It's another tubber. <laughs> did you sneak in a spinnerbait class? Yeah, I did. That's pretty tricky, man. That's, That's it, brother. All right. Absolutely, positively done. And until next time, see you guys on the water. Woo! You don't know where the love of God goes when the waves turn the minutes to hours. The searches all say they made a white mistake if they ain't put 15 more miles behind her. They might have split up all they might have capsized. They may have broken the good one. All that remains are the places and the names of the wives and the sons and the daughters. In a musty old hall in Detroit, they break in the maritime cellars to be cold. Church bells chime in gray, 49 times, for each man only admit the general. They sing this song from the top of the world Now the big lady can all get you food Here they say, come on, tears up for dead When the girls and all Yo, welcome to Smallmouth Crush Live with my host, Epic Eric. Tonight's Smallmouth Crush Live is sponsored by Monster Bass. Get your Monster Bass monthly subscription. In fact, we're going to do a giveaway tonight. As always, Super Chat, every Super Chat you get entered, you're going to win a bunch of cool stuff. Let's, how are you doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. You said every Super Chat that enters, you're going to win. Yeah, what everybody the, tonight. Everybody won it tonight. Travis sending one to everybody. If you, if you enter, I'm entering. I'm donating. How do I do that? Let me hit We're the give a big shout out to everybody. I've seen a bunch of people on already tonight. <sighs> Philip, dude, uh, the chat's going crazy. Bart Carnwright is in the house. And what Bart's in? Bart's here. Jamie, Matthew, LP, Joe, Zombeck. What's up? Brian, Darius, Lee, Gino. John Smith. 
Wave Kearns, man. Dude, Salmon. Steve Hardy. Michael Bradley. Yeah. Robert. Good I night. See Pete, Pete Jablowski changed his name to The Truth. He did. Hey, Robert, I got those uh, Bomber 7As oh, for you, man. Real, real quick up in here. The repaints. Juice Newton. Juice Newton. Gino. Gino, the operator. All right, let's the go over the nice giveaway. We're going to do a used Monster Bass box. Whoa, this time out. Used? Box used? That Epic Eric and I filled the Z-Man takeover. So we still got a jackhammer in there. Yep. We got a couple of those. This is the exact craw. That I used. Craws that helps you catch your 38-pound bag. Yeah. Yeah, wait a minute. Here's the hook, too. Let me take it out of this tube, eh? I know those hooks are in there. The big blade. Yep. The finesse TRD. I got That's a nice bunch of hooks out of the gaffle. package dangling around the bottom. We're just going to drop them in there for you. Yeah, dude. 17-pound test. You can lean on them. You got a weird sticker. <laughs> you got a smallmouth crush sticker. You got the Great Lakes. Smallmouth Crush Country sticker going in. You've got the Smallmouth Crush buff. You got your those, little. Those buffs are still going? Oh, wow. What do you got? The guy who's on the cover of the Z-Man Takeover just might be joining us later. Seth Feiderman himself? I don't know. Let me show you guys how to rig a stupid tube. You ever heard of a stupid tube, Travis? Do you know how to do it? Back to the contest, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm also going to throw in this sneaky bait. You guys don't even, I haven't really spoken uh, to the public about that, but I'm throwing it in there, figure it out. He's talked to me about it. We got a Bass Mafia buff. I have no idea why. Yeah, how'd that get in there? We got an Amp Marine t shirt. They make those uh, storage units for bass boats to help, like, you take yeah. out your old tackle system they put a full new system in i got one in my canvas i love it we got a monster That's cool. bass t-shirt as well yep. going in there yep 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 and yep, yep. we got four beast coast snipe us sniper jigs going in that tungsten box. or lead uh lead lead the lead version for you guys to what's check it out. called yeah metal we're, we're gonna do that that's a super chat you guys know how that works Who's gonna like be the first to, to get on? All right, let me uh let me let me rig a stupid tube for everybody. So Hold on. I'm gonna while you're doing oh, that. What what else you got? I need to know. We always Welcome. like to start out our, our fishing program Podcast. with a duck question <laughs> or a waterfall question, Eric. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And these are gonna change with the season. Sure. MC the hammer is in. Good job. Write them down. Get them in that random generator. I need you to tell me what kind of bird this is. Uh, let me see. Turn it to the side. That sure does look like a smaller Canada goose, and I know you're trying to fool me. God, you're good. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dang it, bro. I know, right? All you're right, supposed here's... to say Canadian. Yeah, I know, right? They're not Canadian geese. They're Canada geese. Canada goose, Canada geese. Good job. You win. And and I didn't look to the, the stream to help me out. All right. So here's a stupid tube. So Travis check out the tube. Grin. This is the tube head that Travis is, or, or the head. It's just a regular EWG lead head, right? So stupid tubing is a very, um, it's, hmm. a, it's a really cool way, which gives the bait a different action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how far... Let me put that in front of the camera. That head needs to be back. And then I'm going to mark where I need to let the hook point come out. So I put my thumb there. I'm going to stick the hook point in the tube. Got it? I'm sticking the hook point in the tube. And then right where my thumb thumb was, if you could see, I'm going to get the uh, okay. hook point out. Right? And then I'm going to pull the head into the tube. Got it? Got it? Got it so far? And then I'm going to pull Move that through. Bit. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm going to pull that through. I'm just pulling it through. It's hard to hold up and pull through because this is a big tube and this is a big hook. And then I'm going to turn it. See how I'm turning it? Turning the head towards the head, right? And then I'm going to, you know, do like you normally would do with a Texas rig. I'm going to stick the point through. And then I'm going to expose it, right? And then I'm going to push the plastic so the line tie comes through. But there's the head of the... That's the head of it right there. And all you got to do is just really push hard and expose the line tie and tie it on. Thank and that, you. 
Now you've got a very weedless tube for your for yourself. It's called the stupid tube. Stupid tube. Very slender, slithers through grass on rock. The idea and the concept behind the stupid tube is you don't have any lead to hang up in the rock, right? So this plastic will get caught. And as you as you pop it, it has a real erratic action off of it. And so instead of the lead getting wedged in between rocks, it's called stupid tube. Look it up. There's lots of uh, vids on YouTube on how to do that in different heads. Works with a lot of different heads, guys. So stupid tubing, man. That's a different way to present a tube. There you oh. go. How about that? I love it. Yeah, man. Good deal. All right. So, hey, I told everybody in the comments earlier that I'm doing a site-wide uh, Black Friday sale at the Bass Lab. 20% off everything on the Bass Lab site. Never done it before. And um, enjoy. Come I got on. some new Tug Life hats in, man. Um, and, hey, who, who was telling me earlier that somebody got a ton of bites on my uh, Shaggy Jig Worm, man? Who was that? Who was that? Who was that? God, look at these comments. They're flying in, dude. It's ridiculous. Yeah, JP Harrell, man. Hey, Eric. Recent club derby, all the keepers I weighed in came on your shaky jig head. The bite was tough, and that bait got me a few bites when nothing was working. Check hmm. it out. Guys Stoked are about that. My audio sucks. Really? Yeah. Oh, and for, I, and for I those of you why. guys who don't know, that's a shaky jig worm right there, man. Little ball head jig. I've got some marabou on the front. Tied there we go. Thank you, guys. I am back. I'm ready. There Lee, you go, man. we got you in. Darius, we got you. Audio is bad. Sweet. He's in. I'm back. Travis, I'm back. Should I start all over? Uh, no, I heard everything you said. Maybe it's because I have earphones on, so I don't know. I didn't have any problem hearing him, but maybe everybody did at home, so. I'm glad you uh, said it. Audio much better. Audio much better. I was on my laptop, Mike. You're absolutely right, Waves. There Sweet. it is, man. Yeah, uh, come up to the mic a little bit more because when you go far away. Right. This is not your first, you know, live show, dude. Come on. Get it together. See, what wasn't else, anything man? exciting going on at the Bass Lab? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's on the banner right there, man. 20% off everything site-wide. That includes stickers, swag, lures, anything I got on there, 20% off this week for you guys. It's crazy, I know, but I'm doing it. And for those of you who missed, I'm, I'm, uh, if you guys can guess what that is, uh, let me know. No, I got some, uh, yeah, I got some new things coming, man. I got some new things coming. So the, the sale's going to run from now until next Sunday. Uh, I do have some more um, 9K Elite Collab stuff coming in this week, and uh, I should have some more shaky jig worms uh, in in the making. Why Maybe I'll have them in off? my son. Dude, I know you're looking really ghostly right now, bro. I look good there. Yeah, Pinhook, man, you're welcome, man. Stupid tubing, dudes. Fix Stupid tubing. It's certainly uh, something I've done a lot on my rivers. Everybody think, you know, when you think of a tube, you, you I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I think it's a forgotten largemouth bait. And um, I just don't think people present it much anymore. I'll give a little tip to my river rat and fellows. I, I bet no one in a grass bed is pitching around a four inch tube. I tend to like the double dip tubes. Um, this is a Dry Creek Outfitters tube. Um, so I love a brown orange because uh, we got a lot of rusty craws on our rivers, Potomac and Upper Bay. And uh, I love a I love a black chartreuse with a little flake. Um, I think it's a great bait to flip around the spawn. But let me tell you what would surprise you. If I'm in grass uh, and, and you're not going behind somebody with a 16th ounce weight in a four inch flipping tube, it is something that those bass on our rivers, if you fish Potomac or Upper Bay, thank me when you catch them, a 16th ounce, not stupid tube. I use stupid tubes when I'm dragging in rock. I use Texas rig when I'm pitching the tube around in grass. Comes mm -hmm. through a lot better, right? 16th ounce. Listen to what I just said. A four-inch flipping tube with a 16th ounce weight pitched and flipped to holes. And there's nothing like everybody's throwing a beaver. 
everybody's throwing a crawl. Everybody's throwing a worm around. But this bait has a profile um, unlike any other, and it has an action on the fall unlike any other. Uh, no crawl, no beaver. Beavers glide, tubes spiral and go wacky. So when you snap that tube, that thing will pop up. And it'll have a crazy action and a slow fall. 16th ounce, especially um, summertime when it's hot. You can go behind uh -huh. somebody on a grass line, grass edge, and clean up on them. There you go. Yeah. And let's see if we can get the fighter man to, to confirm that or throw shade on it. We're going to talk. Yeah, I, we're not talking duck hunting tonight. As much as you're going to try to get him on here and talk about ducks. All right. We're listen, ta we're talking last, fishing, bro. One last question, Eric. You got the Canada Goose question right. Now, this is going to be really hard for you. Okay? All right. This. These are baby ducks. This is a Ducks Unlimited. Uh, this is like an old. So I got this back in. Uh, my dad gave it to me for Christmas in 1992. Yeah. I couldn't guess this if I didn't read the back what these ducks were. Do you know what kind of baby ducks these are? Well, they're they're yellow breasted. Uh, they feel like a mallard. Really? Maybe you've seen mallard ducks when you're fishing in June. I, I, I know. They I've don't seen look like that. No, nah, little mallard ducks don't look like that. Come on, it's one of the prettiest ducks out there. Wood duck. There you go. Thanks for the hint. Good Thanks job. for the clue. Super Thanks for the clue. Nice. Thanks for the clue, bro. A grundle. Not a lot of people that got that. I know, right? And the Canada goose was key, bro. You see, see that? Nice, That's right. nice, all right, nice. Anything else? Well, exciting, dude. You're coming. You're coming with a lot of energy. You've been in the bog all week, man. Um, uh, Travis, Travis, oh. and I before the show. Travis, he told me. Now I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a curious kind of guy, and I started interviewing Travis. I might have had thirty questions in a row, and he just couldn't handle it anymore. I had to get Travis, I asked you a lot of questions today. Yes. It's pretty funny, man. We dove back into your childhood. I got so so this morning I went <laughs> in the marsh and it, it froze last night, right? So everything was frozen. How do you um, handle that when you get out there in the marsh? Like froze oh. like thin layer of ice, or is it getting thick? No, nah, it was pretty thick. So I, I get the kayak in and I'm I'm busting through, bro, like two, three hundred yards, and I'm working up a sweat. Now, granted, it's 21 degrees out, right? Yeah. So I am freaking overheated. I get a couple decoys oh, out. Yeah, Things dude. aren't looking good. I, yep. I find a bunch of open water. I, I ideally I was hoping most most of the marsh was frozen, and I think I thought it was going to be an epic day, and it was a good day. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but yeah, um, I freaking I was basically sh like hypothermia mode, and I had some good stuff. Yeah, like after I settled in and was yeah standing in water. An hour in, dude, I was like almost ready to die. Dude, that's crazy. That's, had to be cra there. that's crazy, dude. That's oh had hey, one there. more thing I wanted to say, man. What do you got? I, I got heavy metal boxes up. It's all blade baits. Okay. And so anybody who orders between now and Sunday, I'm gonna pick a winner on Monday night for a blade bait box. It's got custom bin skis. It's got oh yeah. I also included one of my shaky football jig heads. Um, let's see. It's got Demiki Baltz in it. It's got multiple silver buddies, the OG of OGs. It's Thank got you, a East Stack. East Stack. Sorry. Yeah, it's got uh, 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 of course your regular colored Benskis in gold and silver. Um, it's a great box, man. It's listed on my site. So yeah, be entering the drawing. This one happens to have Dr. Leachy, the black one on it. So you get a shaky football jig, and there you go. Maybe I'll throw a couple more shaky football jigs in there. Because, you know, that's how I roll. I'm tying them up, man. I'm inspired right. to tie it. I'm inspired to tie again, bro. I love it. Yeah, man. Look at East Act Fishing, 10 bucks. Great tip. There you go. Ten, $10 of that is, is you got it like, you know, you got to send it in my way. I'll, I'll share it with. Let's bring tonight's guest on. I finally uh, decided to take Eric's advice and, you know, <laughs> bring some color into the show. <laughs> What's there's up, no, Seth? There's no way it's Seth Fighter. I have yeah. been asking for Seth Fighter for it's how many years now? Like three straight years I have been asking Travis to call you and get you on the show, Seth. I'm well, stoked, you dude. You should have just hit me in the DMs, man. Damn, well, I, you know what? I should have, right? I'm going to stay on those. I, oh, there you go. All right, cool, man. Thanks yeah. for coming, bro. 
Yeah, thanks again. for having me. Yeah. Seth Fighter, man. Llama time, man. Let's lie, uh, lie, lie, lie. Seth, I don't know if you can. So it's a pretty interactive live show. I don't know if you can see the comments on the screen there, but people will be like, uh, it should be over on the right hand side comments and you can see everybody talking. Chatting. Uh, yep. Yeah, got her. There we go. Yeah. Oh, geez. The comments are already rolling in. So what's <laughs> new, man? I know it's like, yeah. Are you fishing? Are you hunting? Oh, a little bit of both. We've been like crazy warm here this fall. Normally I'd just be straight hunting at this point, but it's been like 50, 60 degrees every day here. Damn. Not much for ducks around and fishing's still been pretty good. That's so awesome. doing a lot. Yeah, we were, I was fishing like three, four days ago, November 16th, whatever that was. Oh yeah. That's probably one of the latest I've ever fished before up here. That's awesome, man. Is how's the grass? Is there still grass? I'm sure there's some coontail milfoil still alive. Right? Uh, a little bit, kind of. Yeah. It, it died off a lot. We got one real bad cold, cold mm. little few days, and that killed yep. it. But it, it's pretty much smallmouth time now. That water is yeah. hovering around like 38 to 40. It's oh, pretty much like yeah. blade bait bite. Yeah, right know. on, man. Right um, on. But yeah, it, it, it's been a good fall for fishing. Hell yeah. I yeah. was out on the uh, Upper Bay and Potomac recently, and uh, plenty of grass left. Man, those fish are still wanting to be in it. It's All crazy. Right. Water temp's still 55, right? Oh, I wow. mean, a, a lot of the drill is gone, and but you still get these mounds of just a little bit of hydrilla, but maybe some eelgrass patches and coontail and milfoil. That is bushy. And they just nice. love it. a lot of dings. You got to fight through the dings to get a good one, but they're yeah. all over. And of course, you know, you got your spinner bait bite that's going. Crank bait bite's not quite there yet. But uh, it's still fun fishing, man, because they they want to chase and they want to chew. So it's a lot of action. And the stripers are in. So you get on a little striper rolls, the ditch up there on the upper bay, man. And I caught some nice five to eight pound stripers cranking and spinner baiting. Oh, you yeah. know, not, not not the target species, but man, it's fun to lean on them a little bit. You know, oh, crank yeah. bait rod, man, they'll take you for a ride, dude. It's yeah. awesome. Oh, Hell yeah. 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 Yep. So what's the, what's the smallmouth bite been like for you? What's what's the bait of choice or the technique or how are you targeting these fish? Uh, it's pretty much a straight blade bait and uh, yeah. a little bit of Demetria egg. And I've been fishing them on the river, so it's not mm. – they're wintering only in like 8 to 12 feet of water, so it's kind of hard to it, – it's mostly a blade bait bite. They're pretty shallow. Yeah. Um, you're not, you can't like get on top of them, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. What, What's your blade bait setup, man? Because there's we had a lot of discussion recent live about, you know, blade baiting and hook tangling and taking a hook off. And you got these sneaky things you can share with the uh, the audience. It's, I know you do a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, the best thing I ever did was go to like a really light rod, like a medium light. Wow. And um, and then I I take uh, I take the split rings off and tie braid loops. Dude, the I saw that, that, video. that made the biggest difference. I so, saw that video that you did, and it just was amazing that you can tie that small and have the patience to do it. But what did that do for you? The 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 split ring. Uh, to yeah, brain. I don't I don't hardly lose them any anymore. That's pretty crazy. much catch everyone that you hook. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And what pound braid do you use again? Because I, I did watch the I, video. I use 30. I don't know how much it matters. Yeah, um, you double it up, and I mean, you're really never pulling on them that hard on a blade, so right. Um, right, that's just what I tried originally and stuck with it. You could probably do 20 or 40 or 50, it, it sure. probably doesn't much matter, but I used right to, be, yeah. What yeah, are you guys. doing? Are you doing this like in the off season, or like, like you, you're getting ready, like, okay, we're gonna start throwing blade, but like, how does one even like you can't just tie one or two, right? Like, you no, gotta have man. a bunch. Yeah, I just do them. It doesn't take long. I do them like the night before I'm going. I'll tie up. Huh. You don't really need that, man. I don't go through a lot. It's mostly rabbit fishing's like sand. There's a little bit of wood that'll get you, but yeah, um, okay. yeah. I mean, you can fish one all day. I usually just rig up a few different color ones because it seems like some days or some times of the day they like different colors. Like I've been doing yeah. really good on like whites and stuff like early, yeah, early in the morning, fun. and then. Mm. Once the sun comes up, it's more like golds and silvers and stuff. Right on. So wow, white like a straight bait. white. I love flat it. white or uh, it's actually a glow white. The one I was throwing. I don't oh, know if it actually. Shit. I don't know if it matters. It's <laughs> like river water. It's like you know. I mean, it's fairly clear now because it's so late in the year. But it's you yeah. know, it's Mississippi River. It's got that like tannic okay. brown water. You know what I mean? 
right it's right on great great like stuff or anything is so. there a brand of blade bait that you centered on or you make your own or what's or do you uh, kind of like all I've, over the map i've tried quite a few i got a few i like uh I don't know. I, I, every time I run into a guy that blade baits fishes, so I ask yeah. him what his favorite one is, and you get a different answer from you everyone sure you do. talk oh, to. Yeah. Crazy, man. Well, all that tells me is it doesn't matter. <laughs> right? It, it's a piece of metal. You pull it up, it vibrates a couple <laughs> times, it crashes <laughs> to the bottom, and they they snap. But I, I, I haven't. I don't know. I've gone through yeah. little phases. Like I think this one's the deal, and that yeah, one, and that yeah. one. But you you change um, your hooks out at all? Like when you get your blade bait, whatever one you're throwing, do you like throw the stock ones out, or and then do you mix them up? Do you go EWG? You go round bend? I go light wire round bend. Okay. Um, and then size basically depending on whatever bait I'm throwing. Some of those baits, like I throw that Demiki Vault a little yeah. bit. That's a big bait. You can put bigger yeah. hooks on that. Yep. But another one I throw is a Molex one, and it's yeah. real small, and you got to put like uh. Like, I don't know, I try to get sixes on it, but like sevens or eights, really. Yeah. 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 So there medium light, man. Are you throwing it on a spinning rod? Yes, yeah, sp spinning rod. It, it just medium seems like light. the less, Easy. you know, like the harder you pull on them, the more you lose. I, I it's just like it, man. most of the time when you're small, you fishing, like large muscle, like swallow it, you know, like you can mm -hmm. throw whatever you want. Sure. You're going to catch them, but like. Almost all the small. I mean, smallies will get it sometimes too, but it's like nine times out of ten, you got one like somewhere around his mouth, not yeah. necessarily in his so, mouth. A lot of like cheek hooked ones and jaw sure. hooked ones and stuff like that. So sure. So eight Great. to fifteen for the water. You said what? Uh, is it a quarter ounce, a half ounce? Uh, I like three three eighths there. Um, I'll do half if I'm deeper. Like if I'm on a lax or something, I do a half, but. That's why that vault's nice, eights. man. It's three eighths yeah. because not a lot of companies they jump from a quarter to a half, and you yeah. can't get that three eighths. But the vault's in three eighths, man. And it's a good size three eighths in my mind too. Yeah. And, the stock, yeah. and the stock hooks are pretty good. You can upsize, but uh, I mean, I, those stock hooks are decent. I'm you know? with Seth on on blade baits. Like everyone's got their own opinion. I've gone through different ones. Um, like you guys know, I've been using the the Demiki vault a lot in the last two years, and. I don't know. I, I like it. I started taking the front hook off because I was just getting, I was getting messed up too many times. Like I would get halfway back and it'd be a messed up retrieve or I'd have, you know, I just, and I'm still catching them. So that's just, there you go. That's my that's, style. That's my yeah. favorite. I like the gold and silver. Cause when you can't yeah. pick between either dude, it, it, it mirrors it. And that's a <laughs> badass golden bait. Oh, You're yeah. damn right. It's a badass little color, man. I threw it on a, uh, a lake that has a bunch of golden shiners in it. it's a highland reservoir where i got a lake house set up in western maryland and um i went up there with uh timmy reams he's fishing the npfl he was chasing down aoi so he's throwing his chatter 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 monkeys 43 degree water right and justin's throwing an a rig it's around docks as they pull the docks these fish go to the next dock it's a crazy grass lake but they're so oriented to docks because they're killing the grass they're still dock fish right so yeah. we get into this creek. I'm I'm going 43 degree water. I'm fucking throwing a blade bait, man. So first dog, throw a blade bait. Four and a half comes out and eats it. Then I catch another one and another one. There's like eight fish under this dock. I think I caught them all. Yeah. I caught every single fish that day except for one eight incher that the guy was throwing an A rig. They're like, we never thought of throwing a blade bait up here. I'm like, dude, why not? I mean, it yeah. is the time. Smallies and oh, large, yeah. and a big old pike almost took it off, dude. It was crazy. But, yeah, um, when you get in that low color. 40s into the upper 30s, I don't think there's anything that mm -hmm. outfishes it. What's your uh is it braid to floro? Is that what you go with? Or do you yeah, I throw yeah, braid I use like 12 or you can I don't think it really much matters, 12 or 15 yeah. pound liter. And yeah, um, yeah, just the same old braid of it on my spinning reel all year, <laughs> whatever that is, eight pounds. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like the 12 to 15 pound leader helps you with um, not getting twisted with hooks and shit? Uh, probably a little bit. I mean, little it's going to be a little stiffer, but it's mostly because yeah. I'm hooking like, I don't want to call it brush. It's like sticks and stuff on the bottom. And I, I yeah. can just pull them up on that, on that right line on. versus, yeah. you know, breaking off my bait. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That, that glow white has got me thinking, man. Travis, I don't think I've ever thrown a glow white uh, or white. I got some glow white nail polish right there, man. I'm gonna paint some shit up tonight. I, uh, 
if you're fishing dirtier water, like like in the morning, like that's yeah. the color. Like it's yeah, three dude. to one on the gold, and then once the sun comes up, it's vice versa. That's crazy. You know? Because on on our tidal rivers where Travis used to guide and we we fished some derbs together, um, yeah, I'm talking tidal Upper Chesapeake Bay and tidal Potomac. They eat a blade bait, and it's That's all large mouth. Tip, man, I bet that would work great. Damn on. right, Heck dude. Yeah. Travis, you don't think I'll be testing it here in the next I couple Listen, weeks? I actually, uh, okay. I was on tackle <laughs> warehouse. So so last month, uh, we got into some salmon, and I was going through my good blade baits pretty quick. And so I was like, I got to find a bunch of cheap ones. So I went on Tackle Warehouse and there was like a sale on blade baits. Uh, one particular brand. I don't even know what brand it was, but they were all white. So I bought about 30 of them in the half ounce in all white. So we'll see. That might work. The salmon. Yeah, might. Try it out. I will. And if they suck, they're probably chrome underneath. You can scrape the paint off. That's there right. <laughs> yeah, it might like flake off of the first like you know couple dock pilings you hit if I'm fishing it, but uh, it don't matter. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome! So that's a good tip. Good so tip. you'll probably get a few more, couple more weeks of of fishing in. I would imagine, huh? Uh, supposedly the bottom's falling out. Yeah. Tuesday, but every time oh. I check the weather, it's different. I'm our last day of duck season Sunday, so I'm mm. I'm really hoping. We got some birds showing up. You guys close this Sunday? Yeah, that's Minnesota what? for you. Ooh, yeah. That don't make any sense. Well, 90% of the duck hunters would rather wear a t shirt and shoot blue wing teal the first week of September than uh, go yeah. out in a blizzard and shoot greenheads. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I will give them the DNR credit. They let us vote on it. But after, mm. the, after the results came in, I, I determined that. Those people shouldn't have been allowed to vote. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's where we're at now. We close November twenty sixth. Holy shit! Yeah. All right, listen, we we will get back to uh, some bass fishing talk, but I, since we got Seth and you guys know, I uh, so Seth, I used to duck hunt hardcore, and I took some time off. I'm I actually got back into it this year. Now that I'm kind of permanently up here in uh, upstate New York, I just. I wanted to get the gear and get out there and get my, you know, get my waders wet again, if you will. And, uh, dude, it's been hard. Like the small mouth are biting on Lake Ontario right now. And I'm, oh, I'm torn. Sure. Like I'd rather be out duck hunting right now. Like I, there's just something about it. You know, if you, you get it or you don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously you're one of those guys. Um, our season basically, from the northern half of Lake Ontario actually closes December 10th, but the southern end of Lake Ontario goes until the end of December. And so nice. we got a lot of different birds. And of course we get everything from sea ducks, regular divers to puddle ducks here. Yeah. And, uh, it's been a lot of fun, but I'm, I'm curious. I, I've seen a lot of posts like last year. I know you go out West, like I think Manitoba and stuff too. Uh, Montana. Montana. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah, yeah, you love it there, and I you're do. always a bunch of like golden eye and stuff like that. Like, yeah. what's your favorite duck to shoot? Uh, pro probably at this stage, probably a plain old greenhead. I mean, mm. yeah, I don't know. I golden eyes are golden eyes are cool. Um, I like eating greenheads a lot better. Oh yeah, um, well, I was gonna ask you that. So. So we get a lot of uh, old squaws, long-tailed ducks out here, yeah. scoter, stuff like that. They're not the greatest to eat. How would a golden eye rate as far as table fare? Honestly, could you could you make it work or not really? You, you can. You can. I mean, it, it's it's up there with the goose. You know, you got to do a lot to it. I got add it. a lot of spices and a lot of stuff like that. Like a wood duck or a mallard, you can, you can cook them pretty plain Jane and they're good. Yeah, or teal, yeah. obviously. But yeah. Um, yeah, the diver. Some divers like cans and redheads are. Oh yeah, cans and redheads. Really we've, we've been shooting uh, ring next. They're delicious. Yeah, yeah. but uh, golden eye. It's a rough one to eat. All know. right, fair you enough. Gotta do, you got to do a lot of stuff. It's a lot of work. I had to ask because every everyone out here, you know, they're like, man, you can get into the golden eyes hard, and I'm like, yeah, that's cool. If you go to the Finger Lakes, I'm like in a weird spot. Believe it or not, most of the St. Lawrence River, Lake Ontario. Uh, the cans and redheads, from what I've seen, they just don't. I, I don't know where they hang out. 
Um, I'm going to the river tomorrow, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually probably put in around Chippewa Bay or or I've been looking into Goose Bay and stuff like that. I've been scoping uh, with the binoculars and I found a couple rafts, but uh, all we're getting is sea ducks. We're getting old squaws, scoters, and and you know the golden eye and all the all the redheads and cans are by the Finger Lakes. So Cayuga is like okay. huge for that. Okay. So I'm going to probably uh, take a drive next month and put some time in on the Finger Lakes and see what's up. But that's yeah. my favorite way. Gotcha. Have you, you've been seeing much black ducks? Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah. I know they way, got a lot out there. Like that's our like, special more, treat Wisconsin, around I our shot, house. I shot one black duck in my life in Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, here. Yeah. you. I've. There was like eight of them today that came in early. Of course, they're acted just like a black duck would. You know, they'll circle forever and and then find you and take off. But they're smart birds, you know. Hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. We get, we might kill one here around okay. my house. They're pretty rare, but wow, yeah. uh, wow, um, that's crazy. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> our little bonus bird when we're shooting greenheads. Uh-huh. So you field hunting or open water hunting for mallards? Uh small water or field hunting. I don't I haven't had much luck on big water with the mallards. You kind of got to get them in somewhere, you know, you can about shoot across um yeah. or in a field one of the two. So yeah, like little creeks or little backwater bays off the river, um ponds if they're still open. You know, stuff you. like that. There you go. I love it. All right, Eric, enough of the duck talk. I no, man, I'm just, the people are like the, the comments, man, you know, they're funny. I know, the comments are funny here. They're, they're funny, dude, man. It, Travis has been on a little duck jag, Seth, so people are Yeah, I like it. Things. I see him that. Yeah, I can't help it, man. I can't help it, He can't help it, man. He can't help yeah. it. But, uh, you know, we got Seth Fighter, Seth Fighter on Smallmouth Crush, who have been asking for for three years, and, and, and the people have been asking for. He's yeah, they here, have. Man. Yeah. I think we got, and you're a smallmouth fisherman. He's a hell of a smallmouth fisherman, man. Let's bring it back to fishing, dude. How about them smallmouth? All right, all right, all right. Let's no, talk that's about where. it. Go ahead, bud. No, man, you, bud, you, bud. You got, you got, you, you two guys. What? Talk smallmouth, man. Let's right, go. What, Holy what shit. What water are you most looking forward to next year on the, on the tournament scene? There you go. Great question. Ooh, um, Hmm. We stumped them. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the whole schedule. Um, <laughs> Isn't it not not out? a big fan of the schedule to be honest with you? Yeah, sure. well, what's I mean, up with that schedule change, bro? It's like no Florida yeah. for the start. Going to Texas? Actually, I think Florida will be funner later. Hey, okay, because I think a guy could do more stuff. Um, I'd say probably Champlain, just because. Like I got my ass whooped there this year, and that's historically a lake I do pretty well on. So yeah. I, I'm ready for a little redemption at that one. But oh uh, yeah, yeah the the schedule wasn't. I wasn't that big a fan of it, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. but it is what it is. That's right. Yeah. So do you put like are you putting extra? I I don't know. You know I've been out of it so long. Are guys still like going to lakes? Like, I, what's the off limits now? Is it a year? Uh, well, for in, info, it's off limits the second they announce the schedule. You okay. can pre practice 28 days before okay. the first day of practice. So it's basically so, off limits for a month. So okay. do you do you do that to put more time in on the body of water, or are you you good with three days of practice? And are other guys traveling around? practicing you know pre-practicing i guess you call it a lot of guys do um yeah. especially nowadays um i don't think they used to do that as much before but um i think it's gotten so competitive and a lot of these guys they got nothing else going on uh, like they got nothing like they're sure. absolutely consumed with bass fish like you see these japanese guys you know oh yeah like they're not at home like their families in japan or whatever they're here like they literally like as soon as they're done at one tournament, they go and like pre practice whatever they can, you know, until they have to go practice another tournament. Like they spend insane amounts of time on the water, but they got, you know what I mean? Like they got a wife and kids and all that stuff. Like they're here, they're here to fish. And uh, I see that a lot, a lot of the young kids too, you know, like the 20 some year old kids coming up, they're the same way, you know, they don't got a lot going on. They're, 
Um, and it, you know, it helps, but, um, normally I was always pretty anti pre-practice with like a real weird situational thing. But this year, I think, um, I'm going to go pre-practice the first two. I've never really fished Toledo. I, I fished one tournament there before. It was in like, it was a shad spawn time. So it must've been interesting. I don't know, post spawn shad spawn. And then I'm going to pre-practice fork as well, just cause they're, they're so early for where they are in the country that, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's going to be pretty well a winter time pattern. I don't know if there'll be any hints of pre-spawn. So with that scenario, I think, you know, those tournaments are end of February. I think, some of them fish are going to be on the same stuff end of January, end of yep. February in that part of the region. You know, like Florida, you can't really pre-practice because that place is so weird in the in with the spawn and stuff. Yeah, um, so those places, I think you could actually go there and find stuff that you could catch fish off of in the tournament a month later, where most you know everything else on the schedule or most years on the entire schedule, I don't think you can really do that. With the exception of maybe like, maybe like this Lake Ontario, you know, if you go end of July, you might be able, you know, end of August might be fairly similar. But um, yeah, those two I'm going to go pre practice and um, that and probably just work on scope and more. Just that's not, that's my weakest point or yeah, my really? weakest thing. And then, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a sniper by any means. So. Yeah, I gotta get better at that. That's just bass fishing in this day and age. You better, you better be dialed on that deal. Hmm. Right on, man. A lot of discussion around it, man. Um, not that I want to ask a hard question, but a lot of a unnecessary fan? discussion. Well, no, Why let, let me just ask it up. It's well, hold technology. On. I just ask it's your state. Bro, Deal with it. I, I, I'm not even talking about. Go that. ahead, Eric. What I what I'm asking is if, like in pro golf, they limit your clubs, right? They limit the rod length. They limit the horsepower on your engine. There's a lot of rules in bass fishing, right? They limit your practice. They limit, yeah. you know, supposedly information, right? But there is no limit on this particular technology. If they said two and two, let's just pretend for a moment, that's what they said in certain screen size. Are you for or against that? Um... I mean, maybe some kind of limit, but it's something so high that it wouldn't affect anybody. I'm, I'm not uh, against technology. I just. Sure. Um, I just, I didn't grow up using it. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. stubborn. Like, yeah. I go shallow, smally fish, and I just use my sunglasses, and I have, like, target fish, bank beat, largemouth fish. You know what I mean? I'll see yeah, grass. Yeah, I flip my jig in it. I skip my jig under a dock. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's yeah. just how I fish. It's like he's catching yeah. these fish in the middle of nowhere on nothing suspended. Mm -hmm. And, you know what I mean? I, I didn't I didn't grow up doing that. So it's, it, it's not a strength of mine. But it, it's definitely the way to catch fish. Yeah. A good majority yeah. of the year. And that, that's another thing going back to our schedule. Like I don't really see like we don't really I don't think we really I mean maybe them Florida ones, maybe tail end spawn. I don't know, probably not. Um mm -hmm. like we don't have like a true spawn tournament all year, you know. So in that scenario, I mean I, I, I could see every single tournament this year being one on forward facing sonar crazy with the schedule we got just because you know there's with the exception of those two florida ones that you ain't gonna be able to go down the bank in any of them mm -hmm. and catch them doing that yeah yeah um so let, let me ask what it is, is get you know get it get with the program or get run over you know what i mean that's true man that's true fans yeah. are hating it but i mean it is what it is right yeah if you could if if there was a, a schedule that had six events what lakes and bodies of water would you want to see in those six events um, and when you. well like even our schedule we're going to good lakes they're just like yeah like i i would like to go to all those while they're spawning you know what i mean sure yeah. but like around that time they don't necessarily have to be on beds but you know where you can go down the bank with a swim jig or spinner bait or chatter bait mm -hmm. or a frog or whatever and mm -hmm. you know have a chance to win um yeah yeah like I, I don't mind the lakes. It's just the time of year. Like Smith Lake, like that's a cool lake, but we're going there like middle of July. You know what I mean? And Wheeler's starting to come back. That's a decent lake, but we're going there end of June or early July, something like that. It's just the timing of a lot of them is 
um off for the way i like to fish so, sure um yeah it is what it is but um yeah are i don't you, it's like the lakes we're going to it's just you know but at the same time we used to get uh, crap for like following the spawn and then this year that's true any, that's you know? true that's what, true what yeah a lot of people six dream bodies of water to fish okay um <laughs> you want you want that. dates on them yeah why not yeah okay all right hell yeah um I'm going to do this will be all out of order. Yep. Um I would say Cayuga Lake like late June. Okay. Nice. Early July. Um Cayuga. And then uh I'm trying to think. That Lake Murray Lake was cool. I'd like to be there again about the same time we went last year. Um uh-huh. I enjoyed that one a lot. I, Lake Fork's awesome. If we went there, okay. like, I don't know, sometime April, May, I'd be okay. real into yeah, that. Um, I'd like to go to Okeechobee, like, late April, early May. Like, remember, we had the tournament there, and then, like, I don't know, it was maybe, like, a month later, like, they were catching, like, 37, 38-pound bags, like, left Good. and right. I don't know when it was, but it was, like, I'd like yeah. to be there then. Okay. Um how many is that? Three? That's four. three. That's four. 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 Um, I'd like to go to Lanier, maybe. Like, Lanier, I would like to go, like, early. That okay. That pretty, pretty cool to mix it up. And then just, I don't even think we got a smallmouth one in there yet. Um, no, that's weird. Let's do, uh, let's do St. Lawrence River the week before we're at Cayuga. Okay. Like late mm. June, like done oh. spawning, but you go still jack. Why no Why no, Pella, you know why no uh, Mississippi oh. River? Why no St. Clair? Like that's what I would have guessed. Uh, St. Clair is like my least favorite lake I've ever okay. been to. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mal- <laughs> well, I'm taking a picture of this. Malax is not what it used to be. Yep. Um, and the Mississippi River, I do enjoy fishing there. I don't know it that well. I know I had one really good tournament there, but mm-hmm. um, all right, that place has gotten a lot tougher too over the last few years. Like, has it really? They, they, well, they've hammered seven, eight, nine so hard, and then everything yeah, south uh, of there is kind of garbage to begin with. So, I got really you. the only good, the only really good fishing left on the Mississippi River is probably like. Pool five, pools four and five, five A, six maybe, but seven, eight, nine's just been do they like two hundred boat, four hundred boat high school tournaments, sure. two hundred boat regional, oh, just Jesus FLW tour elite. You know, it just yeah. keeps getting hammered, yeah. and it's like the place really you. isn't that big. There aren't a lot of places for the fish to hide, but that's interesting. Um, I was pretty pretty happy that play, with the local, yeah, local like stick, like local back in clear. like yeah, Schmitty, he he mean, won that one right. Yeah, yeah, he's a really good river fisherman. He, I mean, um, for me, I was stoked grass, man. Yeah, but it used to be like, you used to get a bite on a frog there, and you put your paws right. down. You're, you're getting like 20 more bites right there, if not yeah. 40 or 50. And now it's like, That's crazy. you're looking for a spot where you can get three to five bites on a frog. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, a couple of them ain't going to get it. You know what I mean? That's wow. crazy. I guess yeah. that means those fish do get conditioned. I mean, that's what you're telling me is they get as they get fish for they get conditioned. That's wild. Yeah, and and the river's been low. Like I don't know what they're okay. doing with the da- the dams. They've really uh, in that place just for some reason it doesn't make any sense. You would think low water the place would fish really good, but sure. the higher the water, the better that place fishes. And it's, that's wild. And the, they've been keeping the water really low on those pools for probably the last three at least three to four years and i think that's um maybe that's why the fishing hasn't been good because the water's been low i don't know if there's less fish in there or they're smarter if we just had really haven't had good conditions interesting i mean all right can you imagine well, all the stuff uh, that grew up say it again i said can you imagine after you know it's low water all that stuff is growing on the bank and if they raise the the level yeah. how it would fish in it would be just dumb yeah, like I mean, you'd think when the river gets low, like it would suck them all suck out. Suck them in, the, right? Yeah, and you'd like really whack them, but it doesn't. Yeah. Like you barely get bites, and then it floods, and then there's fish everywhere. I don't even know where they come from. 
That's so crazy. We, we've got yeah. some rivers like that that I fish with my team partner, Scooter Lily down in Carolina. Roanoke's a, a perfect example. When they flood the river, those fish literally go into the woods and they eat everything. Yeah. And then when they drop the, when they drop that dog, if you're there, it's unreal. Like one bank on a shaky head, 40 fish. And they're yeah. the most freakish little fish and giant fish because it's got tens in it. I caught okay. a, a seven nine in a tournament, like last fifteen minutes of it. Um, that that was my big, and and didn't even win big fish that day. That, that's a North wow. Carolina river. Yeah, man, there was yeah. a couple of eights ahead of me, but um, they're the fattest fish I've ever seen. It's unbelievable. They've been gorging for months in the woods, and you cannot get to them. I mean, it is that thick. Cypress trees everywhere, and all sorts of other gum trees, oaks, and all sorts of shit in the woods. And when they come out, they've eaten every crawfish in the woods. It's nuts. Uh -huh. There's stupid fat and they're just jamming it's crazy good man you go down a crankbait it's it's legendary crankbait bites too man any any way you want to catch them it's unbelievable that's cool yeah it is cool cool place to be all right travis what's next man you got questions the, yeah. the crowd has questions man i know we got uh we got 220 guys 220 people watching right now so we appreciate that guys um, Can you imagine if we actually promoted it with Seth and not a mystery guest, bro? We I like to do mystery guests. I don't like. I know, dude, but it's Seth oh, Fighter. This it's I, Seth Fighter. It's the llama. Up, you're never gonna know what you're gonna get on this show. That's how I like it. Okay, <laughs> you're dead right. You know you're gonna get some crazy shit. That's for sure, man. All right, man. I'll tell you what. All right, um, since all right, since ahead, the man. St. Lawrence and Lake Ontario is not on the schedule this year, I want to know what Seth would do if it was in mid July. Where are mm. you starting your practice? What are you focusing on? Like, let's say it was, and it's middle of July. It's day one of practice. Where are you launching? Where are you going? What are you going to try to do? Where's the tournament weighing in? Clayton. Straight to the lake. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with anything else now. I mean, I know they caught some fish in the river this year, but. Um, and I don't have a ton of experience on the lake. I've always, cause we always went out of Waddington and sure. I was like yeah. pretty well lived and died in the river. Um, what would you do? Like, what would you, is there a lot of, I guess, homework before, or are you just going to kind of, do you have zones? Do you have areas you want to side scan or what are you looking for? What are you going to do? Let's say it's calm. It's gorgeous out. It's sunny. What are yeah, you I'm gonna, gonna do? I, I'm gonna get up shallow, maybe do a little Google Earth and stuff, find some pretty stuff on that to go rip down. But yeah, like if I like in perfect world, smallmouth fishing for me, I'm like no graphs, just going like yeah, look, just trying to pick off big black ones, you know what I mean? What uh, are the top what are the top four baits on, on the deck? Okay, in that situation. Uh, good question. All right. Um, I, I mean, that okay. A hair jig, a wacky worm, a drop oh, shot, a light drop shot. Um, and then like a little tube or a nad, something, something small okay. you can drag on the yeah, bottom. Yeah. They, they kind of all got different personalities, you know. Yeah, um, Absolutely. interesting, but yeah, that, that's probably what I'm rolling with. And yeah. All right, hey. so so hair jig, what size? Obviously, the fighter fly, what color? Black, three thirty second. Okay. Uh, Throwing that little piece of Senko on there or no? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, All right. Then you, said, then you said, did you say wacky rig Senko? We did. Yeah. Three inch, mm. four inch, five inch. Uh, four inch green pumpkin. Hell okay. Yeah. Um. Then Drop either, shot. Uh, Wait a minute. Drop waited or, waited, a... waited on the wacky or no? No, waitlist. Oh shit, waitlist. Um, nice. then drop shot would be like a quarter, three sixteenths quarter ounce drop shot weight. Yeah. And uh, what are you dropping? Probably that uh that trick shot by Z Man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any flavor? Uh, I mix it up, but uh, yeah. Okay. Either that Gobi Bryant. Mm. Green pumpkin or yoga pants, depending right. on what, what the lights right, well, doing. Number one, two, Ned two yoga, two yoga pants fans on this show. Okay, dude, <laughs> I know, man. What is it? Is it Gobi Party Gobi or whatever in yoga pants? That's all I use in the Z. Go, Gobi Bryant. Well, yeah, but I like the green pumpkin with the purple fleck. What they call that? Oh, oh uh, yeah, 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 Mardi Gras. Gobi something. 
Yeah, I guess it, it, it's going to be good. It's going to be something. I just have my two. Yeah. If I could pick one, it'd be yoga pants all day long. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. there's something I'm about it. That. Yeah. I, I don't know. So um, enough, they love yoga okay. pants too, bro. I mean, what can you say about it? Yeah. It's hard to beat. That's right. Nice. Yeah. All that right. makes sense. I, so you're just covering water, looking for fish. Yeah, I probably bomb in the hair jig ahead of the boat and just look and if one either eats it or don't. And if he follows it to the boat, I'll pick up one of them other three rods and try to catch him on that. Up here on the river and the lake, nice. when you when you do get up shallow, um, talk to me about some of your your because you fish a lot of events out here now yeah. in previous like practice days. Have you found like large schools of fish shallow or is it just one or two? And and then when you do, can you go back the next year and are they still using that same structure typically? Yes and no. We've we have seen the water levels change there quite a bit the last few years. Um, so some stuff I've had has gotten, you know, some years it's too deep, some years it's too shallow. Um sure. some stuff's been really doesn't seem like the best spots have ever been that consistent. Like there's some spots that I always got fish on them, but I think that's a problem. Like too many people know about them and they get like really tough to catch and yeah. might not necessarily have really big ones on there. It seems like the best ones are always kind of just that year I catch them there. And I can't mm -hmm. really speak to the lake cause I've only been out there once shallow. Um, sure. But on the river, um, yeah, like the best spot I ever found in my life. I check it every year we go back there. And I've never caught anything there Dude, again. But it was like crazy? loaded with like five pounders one year. I know. Oh, and my I, God. I got They're spots. Like, I don't know why I even keep going back. But every oh, yeah. year I'm thinking, okay, they're going to be here. So here's yeah. what I do know. I know with the water level, you have a great point. You know, last year – or actually this spring and, we had and the a moss really, like the moss has yes, changed a say. lot in the last few years like yes, some places right. has been like beautiful sand then you go back there the next year and it's like green slime and they're gone good yeah yeah yep. that's it i eric i even told you remember we caught those fish on beds during the canadian early season yeah before may 10th i said man this bay is warming up yeah and sure enough when the New York season finally opened and after the spawn, I, I decided to go up shallow those areas that were full of fish the year before were full of moss. And I have to believe it's because that water warmed up so quick this oh, spring yeah. and there wasn't a fish to be had. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that was crazy. Me and Travis had on the lake, one of the best crankbait days I've ever had, dude, for smallies. It was yeah. unbelievable, Seth. You'd have loved it, man. That Flat was early sides. season. Uh, that was early season. Flat side, so sick, dude. If you ever had a chance to come up here for the Canadian early season, it would freaking – you'd have it, – it's phenomenal. Just it's How you like the fish, too. Yeah. Not looking at anything. I didn't look at one live scope fish, and I caught – was it a 35 pound bag, Travis? Because yeah, you your scale right. sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I did all right, man. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I'm film, bro. <laughs> two, two, two Z Man Mini Max fish, two Z Man, the big crawl. And by the way, leaned on them with 15 to 17 pound test. Not looking at nothing, just uh, fishing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then one, one on a little uh, hollow tip worm, this little get up. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool, man. That little joker right there on a Z Man football ned i'm in love with that ned head by the way that thing is, right. oh dude i love it i don't even throw the button head anymore when i'm around rock this is a no-brainer and that hook gets them dude that's a Hell good, yeah, good question so 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 when you're when you're throwing your your trd what what's your setup as far as the terminal tackle the jig head um great question because i use the ned locks almost exclusively and i don't know if you're into that or have used it but I love uh, it. No, I got I use the outcast one. Um, okay. That's the only one I use. It's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a ball head with a flat spot on the top. Um oh, yeah. And then it just with a two out hook in it, it's got a pretty stout little two out hook in it. I can crack them on it. And, um, <laughs> Do they make it in regular sizes, like eighth, not the like uh European Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's sixteenth. 
332nd, a 316th Carter. Oh, that's nice. I don't know if we got a three ace yet. That's a good mix of sizes, in my opinion. I like that. My my brain doesn't connect with the uh, 130, you know, all the funky ones. One six. What the fuck is that? I can't, my brain, (laughs) I can't figure it out. Yeah, dude, I know. Well, you're different, Travis, than everybody. So I get it. If I told you how many freaking deadlock heads I go through in a year. I I'd fish with you, bro. Okay. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, I mean, I know. That's why I went to the football one. I so lose said, a lot I, less. I, one of the things I've been doing a lot, especially in the last two years, besides going deep on the lake, I've been I've been forcing myself to hang out in the river because obviously when I guide, some days we can't get on the lake and you know, some good tournaments have been won and, and top finishes are coming from the river at times. And dragging that Ned even in 20, 30, 40 foot of water has really done some damage for me. And I've been, mm. uh, that's kind of like my, my go-to even out deep. It's such a fun bite, but it's, it's tricky. Even clients that I guide on a regular basis, sometimes they can't even detect that bite. Uh, cause it's, it's, it's something you just, you have to experience it to know, you know, once you get yeah. it, you kind of can get it dialed in, but, What's your experience when, when when you go deep? What what are some of the baits of choice for you uh, when you're targeting those fish deeper? Um, if the winds, if you can get like heavy current, like that's a thing. Last year when we were up there, there was like no current. I tried drifting a little bit in the river, and I like wasn't feeling it. You'd probably be better off just scoping in there. But sure. um, hmm. like if if the because I remember a couple of. Uh, what I don't remember what year it was, but it was like rage in one year. It was one of those high water years, like a big like ounce and a quarter, ounce and a half Carolina rig. It was like oh, the greatest shit. thing ever, dude. Just like twenty five <laughs> pound line, just chugging down the river, you know, yeah. mile a half an hour, and I think just double oh, over, you just that's the best. wrench him and boat flip him. That, that that was fun. Like if I. If I could drift heavy current, the Carolina rigs the deal for me. Really? Oh, and like God. everything that bites, oh, it's God. like four plus pounds, it seems like. You really Why is that? Why does the with, Steve rig know. get the bigger know. bite? What are you dragging? I mean, do you, do you want this to tell little what you drag? This little yeah, craw. Right on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What what yeah. what would be your standard leader length on a on a C rig? Uh not that long, two foot maybe. Okay. Because I think they're coming to the weight. Like, I've done enough cameraing Mm. in that river. Like, when you start chunking your camera on the bottom, they, like, swim right up to it. So, I think they're coming to the weight. They're hearing that thing bouncing down the river. So, I want Mm. want my bait fairly close. Um, Mm. I don't want, like, a big one liter. You know what I mean? That that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Bead or no bead? Uh, I put a rubber bead on just to protect my knot. Like, I'm using a tungsten sinker, so if you use, like, a glass bead, it'll break and cut your line. And, like, when you're casting it, that thing hammers your floor yeah. not so hard. I, I They make a – I don't even know who makes it. I got them off the yeah. warehouse. But a, little, a little black rubber bead, I just put that on there just to protect my knot. So are you using floral right or braid um, do you for use your tungsten main line? or lead? We got all these questions. One at a yeah. time. Yeah. Question. All right, I'm using tungsten and floral. Know, if you can't get okay. them off, pass them off, bro. Yeah, tungsten yeah. and fluoro, right on. What's your main? Your main is twenty, and then what are you doing for the leader? I, I'm straight through all the way. I'm like twenty or twenty five. I don't think they care one bit about all the way through like that. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, that's so crazy. I don't, don't want to pull out a different spool to retie it later. Like when I retie, I just yeah. cut off my last little bit of line, tie that on, then tie my. You know what I mean? It's just all the same. Yep. I don't think they care. It, what, I mean, what, if they're gonna come eat a three odd hook and a crawdad on an ounce and a half sinker. I don't think they care about how big your line is. Eat that nope. wild. That's fucking yeah, awesome. It's small I mouth, fucking love it. Like, yeah. They're nuts, man. Andy B. I got to give Seth a little juice. He said the two best tutorials he ever watched was you and Aaron Martin's. Oh, nice. In particular, any. Yeah, one of the ones I watched that you did was how you read grass because I'm a grass fisherman because I fish the Potomac River and the Upper Bay m- more than anything. I fish with Travis. He's the expert up north. I'm a largehead guy. I'm a river rat. 
I, I fish like you grew up fishing. That's how I grew up fishing. That's how I prefer to fish. And grass is the leveler. I don't think scope plays as much, although I know people yeah. are doing it a little more on, yeah. on the grass uh, these days. But uh, nonetheless, you know, you could still win old school, which is great. Yeah. But um, Andy B, the one I liked is when you broke a grass edge down, man. I'm like, that was money. I think you're using your side or 360. Uh, but you were talking about, you know, how you read a grass bed, how you go back and attack it, what you look for. It was awesome. So Andy B agrees. Mm -hmm. uh, and anything you've done smallmouth, he loved. I became a fan of yours uh, when you showed me how to Nico rig, dude. I just thought that was a money thing. Yeah. Didn't you win that derby? It wasn't an elite series. You won it. And you sat down in your boat. You did this tutorial on it. The weight you like to use, how you rigged your Nico, how you fished it. And I'm like, I felt like personally, I'm like, this is a Bass Pro being authentic, breaking it down for real, just how he did it. I wasn't, I didn't feel like you're trying to sell me anything. It was like, that, 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 that's, that guy's the real deal. When he's talking, it's what he does. And I appreciated it. So I just wanted to yeah. say that. Like that's it. how I became a fan personally. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, and if, and a fan ever since. There you, there you go. go. Appreciate um, it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Travis, when did you become a Seth Fighter fan? Man. <laughs> <When>? <laughs> I don't know. I saw him at the bar down in, uh, I think it was his. Yeah. Record. I don't remember where we were. Well, yeah. <laughs> Somebody oh, yeah. else said uh, Juice oh. Newton became a fan when uh, you let Zona cut your hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jamie Juice Newton, man. We got some good fans here watching, man. So, Oh, by the anyway, way, Eric. A um, wild bunch. What do you got? Uh, Travis, who's in the comments, Travis Wise, he called me um, yeah. uh, three days ago or whatever. He goes, you're talking dude, about our scent man? Paying. What's that? Our scent man? No, no, no. Uh, just oh. a viewer, Travis. So yeah, he yeah, called yeah. me. So Bass Pro Shops had like some sort of a uh, grand opening in Ohio. And All Zona right. was there. And, and Travis Travis ran into uh, Zona and brought my Talking name up about, about the incident we had a few years ago. Late at the at hotel. Night the, at the hotel. And Zona basically basically accepted my apology. Like he he did a video about it. And uh, really come on the show and he's, he forgives me for keeping them up. And uh, he forgives me for opening, you know, when he ran out in his tidy whities at yeah. three, 3 a.m. Yeah. So we're good. That's all. So that's good. That's good. Yeah. Right, are you going to show the clip or are you bringing zone on the show to like, uh, we're gonna do and, that. And yeah. bury, bury the hatchet. I can dig bury it, man. Hatchet. Hey Seth, I have a question for you, man. So yeah. uh, I've been a lifetime subscriber to Bassmaster magazine since yeah. I've been a paper boy when I was 12, I'll be 61 in November. And one of the, my dreams is to travel across the country and, and do like just on my phone, little Instagram shit, legendary likes, right? Got a little Instagram page called legendary likes. I've been doing little legs of it. And uh, so I got a question for you. Some bass pros do this. Some bass pros don't. So do you in the off season when you're not fishing, are you able, uh, do you take uh on the water instructional trips can people book you i'm curious if you don't that's cool um, if you do, I, I... no i don't okay cool just wanted um, to know man just yeah. wanted to know yeah. yep yeah because i wanted to hit some lakes across the country that you might be near so anyway just okay. thought i'd ask well i'll yeah. at me but not for the <laughs> general right. public yeah but Ten you four, probably got man. some stuff I... on that shelf back there we work a deal out i mean <laughs> dude dude let me just tell you something i think I don't know, man, but if there's something OG vintage uh, or custom made that you're looking for, I probably got it. Certainly balsa. I'm a balsa oh, I know freak, you do. Yeah. But, uh, but I'm also an OG, like, you know, OG. Certain lures were made a certain way. Maybe people call yeah. me crazy, but I've just seen too many instances where something wacky ass out of Japan, like before – uh, the jackhammer came out. I was fishing, you know, uh, a chatterbait from Japan, and I was with Pete Kluzik from Bass U. We were shooting with this guy that had a hat cam. And we we're trying. We we're talking about Bass University, all sorts of ideas. And Pete invited me out because um, he wanted to brainstorm with me on business stuff. So anyway, I'm throwing this crazy chatterbait, and dude, he, I'm a, I'm catching him behind him. I'm the third guy in the boat too. Yeah. I'm the third cast on the piece of wood. I'm the last cast on the rock point. I'm the last cast on the milfoil you know, little three clump house and I'm yeah. smoking them. And he like, I can't take it anymore. He's showing his E-man, by the way, just a regular chatterbait. 
Yeah. He goes, give me your rod and reel. I gave him my rod and reel. In 100 yards, he caught two, three and a half. So we looked at each other at the same time. He said, sometimes it is the bait. I swear oh, to God, yeah. it's crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. No doubt. I, same situation with a, a a moth chatter. I mean, that was the monster moth chatter from, uh, um, what you call it? Uh, and then I was throwing a, uh, oh, my God. It's called the Waddle Bats. When it first came out, nobody knew about it because I was searched YouTube. And I just put in hunting crankbait and I came to this Japanese web page. This is eons ago. And yeah. I saw this crankbait doing this crazy shit. It had a blade on it. But I'm like, what the fuck is that? So I found it and ordered it from a, a Japanese website, got him in, threw it on my river behind my buddy who's a way better cranker than I am. He's throwing his famous minus one on the shallow wood and literally they wouldn't bite his bait. He's had that bait for 25 years. Paints chewed off. They bite it. I've seen him scorch him on it. He's an old team partner. And I'm like, they were just eating mine over his. He didn't get a bite. And it's really? like they ate it like yeah. they never saw it. And I think yeah. they never saw it. And no, I don't I'm know sure. if that shine has worn off. Do you feel, have you ever had experiences? I'm dying to ask. Have you ever had experiences in your career where you threw something that was new to you, new to the bass, color, action, size, profile, shape, something wacky that you go, damn, it does make yeah. a difference. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the hair jig, yeah. oh, the oh. Senko. I mean, when the Senko come out, dude, you go down a bank, like hit one in the head with your trolling motor, it'd be running for his life. You throw a Senko <laughs> in front of it, slam on the brakes and eat it. Yeah. The A-Rig, That's I mean, crazy, same man. deal, dude. When the A-Rig come oh, out, you throw yeah. that thing out in the middle of the lake and one get it. Uh, Isn't that crazy, yeah. man? I mean, everything That's like that. But now, like, look at A-Rig and now, you know, it's like, it's all right. Yeah. Dude. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember at the time it was like insane. You, like I'm not kidding. You're in the middle of the lake and just start reeling, you'd catch one. No, now guys were throwing. They do get conditioned. That's so. That's oh, cool, absolutely. Man. Yeah, Got, yeah. Guys were throwing hair. I remember like back in Sturgeon Bay in like say 2006, 2005, 2006, and, and there was guys that had it dialed in, but there was a lot of people that still didn't have a clue, and I was one yeah. of them. And in 2007 or eight or somewhere around there, when I got my hands on one of those, like there was some epic days with that. Oh thing. yeah, you had I the same experience. Some, yeah, well, I uh, went back. Some to, guy just popped up and go ahead. I, I learned about it at Surgeon Bay, and like, yeah, I'm fucking. I like didn't really catch him on. I didn't really hardly know what I was doing, and kind of figured it out a little bit. And then I went back to like Malax and like the smallmouth lakes around my house, and like. They'd never seen it there before, you know. It was like we went to Lake Havasu. Uh, I think it was my rookie year on the Elite Series, fifteen yeah. or something like that. I threw it out there. Them things never seen it. I caught one figure eight in it in the tournament. <laughs> like he was kept following me. Got to the boat. Like I got three feet of line out on the rod tip. He's still all over. I just started doing this in front of the boat and caught it like a three and a half pound. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Is That's there any crazy. bait that, that? That's crazy. Like, like old school baits that they don't make anymore that you kind of wish you could get more of or get your hands on any. Is there anything like that? Uh, maybe some plugs. Travis, and stuff, I love this but, question. Uh, okay. The problem is with that kind of stuff. I, I, I almost hate tournament fishing with them unless I would have like, I would have to have a lot of them. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's a couple I got like, you know, yeah. one or two of or whatever. And it's like, like it, I don't even, I don't really want to catch them on something I can't get more of because yeah, you know you got one and it's like you're catching yeah. them on it and then it's like I'm afraid to throw it, dude. If I break this off the yeah halfway through the first day of the tournament, I'm gonna to want to put the boat on the do, trailer. Do you, you know have any I mean? baits like, that are that are kind of like sentimental that have some meaning that you just don't throw that are retired? Yeah, you have I got retired like ones for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hell what, yeah. What would be like your top two that's retired? Oh, I'm Travis, you're rolling, man. I love it. You're talking about baits, Travis. Go, yeah. man. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude. I want to know. Me too. He's got him on I like the, the plug. I the plug I caught him on at St. Clair. I retired that one. Oh yeah. I thought uh, you hated St. Clair. I do. It's a. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a featureless lake that anybody could go catch fish on. Like I got it. And now it, it, that was like before Live Scope, I disliked sure. it. 
now yeah. like whatever anyone can go there and catch them but it was yeah. that kind of lake yeah. where anyone could go there and catch them like you'd have yeah. guys from florida winning smallmouth tournaments on saint Clair. Like, <laughs> like yeah dude they drifted through them one time in practice put a waypoint on them and won the tournament you know what yeah. I mean? it wasn't oh, like shit. oh he side scanned and found this little sand boulder edge or got up yeah, yellow yeah. and was just sniping them up there like you're just it's the stupidest lake i mean it's full <laughs> of fish it, it's it's a good lake dude there's a lot of big yeah. smallmouths in there but like yeah dude honestly you could put your boat in at metro if it was blown out of the north mm-hmm. just idle out into the middle kill your motor throw a bait over the side and drift and you're gonna catch fish like um maybe not anymore they're a little smarter there now Right. Uh, but like when I first started going there, it's all you did. Dude. You just drifted oh, yeah. around aimlessly That's casting. Crazy. Like <laughs> oh, I, I thought... hated it, dude. I'm used to like, oh, they're on that boulder. Yeah. Oh, they're up on this little sand patch. No. Yeah. Like yeah. they're, you, they're you... in this like one square mile of St. Clair and you just dive oh, around shit, in it. It's it, man. It's awful, man. But but that plug you used on St. Clair to win, you figured something else out, right? To get the bigger bite. Um that right, was just cranking? a magical place, man. That was a, yeah. it. You could have won that thing on anything. <laughs> like, then I went there the first. I found it. I think the first day of practice, I hook one on the crankbait. Comes up to the boat. Mm-hmm. There's like three five pounders with it. It's a five pounder. I'm like, oh my god! Damn, you know. And then I fish around there and didn't really catch much else. And then like the last day of practice, like that was the best thing I saw the whole time in practice. I'm like. Yeah. Was that like a fluke? Was that just like a little wolf pack where they like loaded there or what? And so I went back yeah. there. Like I never double check spots ever. Like I think it's the stupidest thing you could do. But it was mm-hmm. for that AOI tournament, so it really wasn't that big a deal. Um, so I go back there, pull yeah. up to my dot, fire out there, same deal. Hook a great big one. Three of them come up to the boat, and I'm like, okay, it's like there's something there. Like it's a a special spot. And like, yeah, it, it wasn't a, that was the that's how St. Clair is, though. You know, I could have won that. I could have won that tournament on whatever bait you wanted, pretty much. Hmm. Um, to some crazy. extent, you know, man, it, maybe not. I like it. Seemed so, like the crankbait was the deal, but there were so mm-hmm. many big ones there. I think I could have won on a drop shot. Hmm. To be honest with Very you, very interesting. But it was fun winding on them. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like the. You did get the biggest bites because, like, I, I caught a lot of drop yeah. shot in the last day, and it was like more like. 23 pound stuff and it seems yeah. like all the biggest like five plus pounders did come on a crankbait but um that's interesting yeah, i think i think I you could what, what that is just a bigger meal for them and they responded to it. it was I mean, that time of year i mean it was it was late it was like i think it was october end of end of september beginning of october it was it was prime time for cranking um and yeah, sometimes they just like to chase you know hmm yeah, right. They do. And it's a it's, it's a historic crank bait late, chase, you know. No it's a, yeah. Damn. Sounds like my kind of lake. Travis, we gotta go, man. Let's go cranking, dude. I love uh, cranking dude last small time dogs, I went to St. Clair, I was heading back to Wisconsin and uh it was what it was happened? right around the spawn. And I haven't been to yeah. St. Clair in a few years, so I, I'm like, screw it. I was driving through, I wasn't even gonna stop. I'm like, fuck it. I'll drive two hours north here. Yeah. I launched and uh bro, I've seen I've never seen more boats in one little spawning flat in my life. And I was like, this what? is what this lake turned into. I'm like, I was shocked. I feel sorry for being on St. Clair. Like yeah. the pressure I saw. Damn. Damn. But I, I think like what I complain about in the lake is like what makes that sustain that pressure because yeah. if they were oh, yeah. if it was like a rock pile lake or a boulder lake like dude you wouldn't hardly ever get a bite but being a giant featureless lake yeah i think that yeah. allows it to handle the three four hundred boats a day that are fishing mm. on it you know what i mean because it's, it's not like they're it's not like he's sitting on one big boulder half the year you know what i mean getting right. thrown right. out every 10 minutes they're just swimming around on yeah. perch grass on a giant flat Oh my God! So Speaking Seth, about earlier you flat, mentioned. He, wait, Travis, I want to tell Seth about before we go to the okay. next question. I just want to share the day we had, dude. So yeah. Travis has got me in this place on Ontario. I have no idea where I am, but um, we're on the big pond, right? We get into this little shallow bay, 
And, uh, you know, it started to look like largemouth territory, right? And we got this little riprap bank that goes to a point. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna start cranking. So I throw, I put on this one. It's a little uh, flat-sided plug made by Marty Burns, Big M, custom painted by TK Stanley. These aren't out of production. I can get them when I want them, right? So I ain't scared to throw them, right? Nah. But uh, I'm throwing this red crawl. So as I'm reeling, there's a little ditch right along the shore. I come up, I hit something, I snap my rod. It's it's grass. I'm like, oh, there's a little grass line here, right? So I catch a big, large head. He catches it on camera, which is cool. The, the fish, as I snap it, the fish just goes boom. Like you see it on camera. It's really yeah. cool. And I slow roll a spinner bait uh, and ditch melon around the point, catch another big large head, right? Then we go in, I start chatter baiting some reed heads, crushing the fish, right? And he's still throwing plastics. We get out to, and I pick the crankbait back up, catch a small eight. And I'm like, Travis, man, I'm burning. I'm going, Voot, and stopping, Voot, stopping. And as soon as I engage that reel the next time, man, it just loads up and yeah. it's on. He starts throwing outside and we literally wind on them the entire rest of the day and that's the bait i threw i'm having so much fun like seven uh, seven two loomis crank rod 10 pound mono because i like to throw mono because of the stretch if it gets snagged i could pop it off a little bit easier but yeah. we jammed on them travis how many fish did we catch that day a lot yeah that well, was fun a lot I mean, right? And we wound on them all day. It didn't yeah. have to look at nothing. I could stand on the back of the boat. I'm not like trying to peek around Travis to look at live scope. Just fucking casting, snapping. <laughs> it was so much fun, dude. I just loved it, man. So anyway, dude, that's what we did. That was yeah. one of my favorite days of fishing ever. Oh, yeah. Because I could wind on them. Yeah. Not staring at the screen, just fucking casting. And I winding, love staring man. at that snapping screen. That no, if I didn't have that screen, dude, I, I know. We can't fish. be any more obvious. wouldn't even fish. Jeff, which is your... Seth, which is your favorite color? Okay. I'm gonna send you one of these crankbaits, bro. <laughs> I'll send you. I'll send you whatever. And then I mean, I'll you I mean, flat side. I'll do that red crew. Huh? Heck yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool, man. I got you, bro. I got you. You have to hit me. Appreciate up it. At the address. All yeah, right. man. Yep. Yep. Okay. Damn. I'll need another one, TK, on the next round that I get painted. <laughs> I got 30 more coming, so I'm not. I'm not missing anything. Oh, nice. Anyway, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I order them by the 30. Hmm. That's what I do. Oh, yeah. I can't get enough. I can't get enough crankbait fishing in, dude. I fucking love it. And yeah. Seth, that was that was uh the early season at Canadian Open. So it yeah, that's closes cool. May 10th. You gotta get up here before May 10th. When Such is it open? It's open now. Like, here's the dumbest thing, bro. Yeah, dude. We talked about this, dude. <laughs> we got two counties, St. Lawrence and Jefferson County, up here. They close smallmouth fishing November. December 1st is closed. So the last day in November, it's closed okay. until the third week in June on the U S side, Canada sort of now has it right. They stay open until May 10th, Yep. but they don't open up until that first weekend in July. Yeah. So basically we can take advantage of April and May on the Canadian side on Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence river. And it's freaking epic. Yeah. Unbelievable. Freaking amazing. It's unbelievable. And I wish cool. I wish New York would I mean we can go south. I can go to Oswego and the southern shore of Ontario and and fish, but is it as good, know. Travis? Yeah, it's good for sure. Like like as good as we've seen it when we go early season. Still so I yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's different. It's a it's that part like how, of how, how's it set up? Yeah, like from yeah, what I've seen, and uh, I ain't seen much. Everything's the same, right? Okay. So you got you just got good rock, yeah, out to 30, 40, but it's there's no ledges, there's no real humps. It's just mm. I mean, there is, but there is there's not there's not as much structure on the south end of Lake Ontario. Okay, but they're there. How far from your uh, place in calcium, bro? Yeah, 45. Oswego. That's it. Yeah. Oswego. Uh, I can be in Oswego in an hour. That ain't bad. Yeah. Hell, dude. We'll get out there. You damn right, dude. Awesome, man. I feel All bad. Right. I should be out there Wednesday. It's supposed to be 45 and light winds, but I'm gonna go this shoot Wednesday. <laughs> you can't stop <laughs> thinking about them ducks, dude. Honey. Honey, I'm home. What's for dinner? Yeah. Duck a la orange, man. Bro, I had, been I had pintail and tail tonight, bro. Come on. Duck oh, sandwiches. Yeah. How'd Hell you cook yeah. that shit, dude? How'd you cook it, man? 
I just I put in a cast iron with butter. I put a little steak seasoning and Worcestershire sauce and eat it. You just yeah. you just eat it like a duck for duck lunch. lunch. Okay. What? How, how do you cook yours, Seth? Like, what's your favorite I, duck to eat, Seth? Uh, I actually rotisseried mine. Uh, Shit, I a pluck a mallard ball. hull, uh, oh. brine it for a day. Yeah. And I'll, I'll dry rub it, rotisserie it for mm. 25 minutes. Then I'll cut it down the back, spatchcock it or whatever, put Hell it in yeah. a cast iron, broil it for, uh, oh I don't God. know. I keep an eye on it. I don't know. Five minutes, maybe try to crisp some skin yeah. up Shit, a little Seth, bit. Why don't you get your ass out here this week? We'll go catch a bunch of small yeah. mobs from Obey. <laughs> And then we'll freaking go blast a bunch of old squaws. Let's go. Fly him, fly him yeah. in, Travis. That's what we do. We do a courtesy flying for anybody that comes on the show, man. Free <laughs> flights. Right, yeah. Great. Fuck, yeah. fuck. Free flights for all our guests. As long as send me the plane tickets. I'll be there. You picking me oh. up? <laughs> yeah, we would, man. We're cheating you first you. class. You pro, bro. That's all I got to say. Yeah. And the most authentic dude on tour. I said That's it. Right. Damn right I did. Damn right I did. Man, it's been go. awesome, man. Damn, we got some yeah, man. Thanks Travis, you, for uh, you, uh, hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, don't man. wait three years next time to get me Yeah, out. we won't. I, I ain't doing nothing. I've been slacking. Uh, dude, yeah, man. We I had to get my bait talk on, man. All I've been hearing about is ducks, bro. Look, at, look what's behind me. We can do, like, shows and shows. <laughs> I want to know if I want to know, like, yeah, we there's so much more to talk about, man. Yeah, so yeah. much more to talk about. We got to get him back on for All sure. Right, we will. We will. Right. Yeah. Thanks for having me, boys. Do it, right. man. All right, Seth, ducks tomorrow. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah right good. on. All right. All right, All right brother. Have a See good night, boys. man. Thanks you again. Too. Peace, brother. See you. Nah, that there was you awesome. Go. That was good. Yeah. How was that, everybody? He was fantastic. Yeah. Dude, thank you very much. For? Getting Seth on. Okay. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm going to send him a crunk bait, man. Get on that. I'm going to send him a little crunk bait. You should send him your shaky jigs, too. I'm going to. I'm going <laughs> to. I think it's tough because, you know, like if he's sponsored and stuff like that. But, nah, you know, I don't think he's got a crunk bait sponsor, does he? Rapala. Oh, he does. I can't be. Yeah, I guess I can send him some. Come on, man. We got to look for Seth, man. The fighter, man. No, that was awesome. I'd, I'd rather talk duck hunting with him, man. Dude, I know, man. Fuck. If you don't get it, you don't get it, Eric. I know, I bro. Bad, I know what's bro. up. I got it bad. All I'm thinking about tomorrow is Eel Bay. I got my kayak in my boat. So I'm driving really? my boat. Out in the middle of big ass waves tomorrow. Here's what happened, dude. They drew the water down so much on the river. I can't even hide my big boat in grass right now. Yeah. Like I have to, and I have a blind. I just think, like I saw, I, I there was a bunch of pintails and black ducks and shit two days ago. I set up and my blind, my boat's pretty, I have a, I have a, I have I have a blind for like offshore, right? Open water or yeah. you know, in the marsh. And it, it looks legit. It's real. But yeah, I just feel like they don't they don't like a big cattail island out there, you know? Right. So tomorrow, I haven't done this before. I tried this afternoon to load the kayak in the boat and it wasn't right. easy. Right. That was on dry land. Oh yeah. So tomorrow, Damn, dude. I'm going to get there in the morning. I'm going to shove the kayak, put my decoys in and run two, 300 yards down, get it back into some cover. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping I can get the kayak back in the boat tomorrow. But Dude, ugh, man, no, 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 no. Come on. I do it. I can't do it, man. I'm stoked for you that you're all excited about it. Nah, That's awesome, man. By myself, I ain't got no duck hunting friends up here, man. I I do. I wish I could be that guy for you, but I wouldn't be. Even if I was next door, I'm like, enjoy, I'm man. Out here every day by myself, bro. <laughs> Setting decoys, <laughs> fucking calling whoa, ducks, whoa, shooting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, maybe at some point you'll have some clients you can take. I ain't got no friends up here, man, that want to duck hunt with me. Well, what about clients that'll pay you? Well. I mean, that's what you want to do, right? 
I mean, look, you, you, you said you wanted to learn the ropes, so this is the learning season, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. I know I what mean, to do next year. I can get, get people on birds for sure. That's but good. I don't know how to advertise it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Right. It's obvious most of my viewers don't give a shit about duck hunting. <laughs> That's right. It's small mouth crush. So, <laughs> so, um, are we, is next Monday a holiday holiday? Because, of oh, yeah, let's talk about it. We need a break, bro. Okay, bro. Let's look. One week. One Since week. Since you brought it up, we're going to take next week off, guys. Right. I'm going to take you it guys, off my schedule. You guys cool with that? Who's cool with that? Thank Anybody God. cool with that? <laughs> oh, you look for a break? <laughs> You've been duck hunting. <sighs> Let's see. Finally, the truth. Duck sucks. Do we have a choice? <laughs> And official says, Yeah, enjoy the Cyber Monday deals. Small Math Advisor says, Good call. Duck sucks Very from Darius call. King. Jig Squad says, Finally, the truth about what? Jig Squad, we need a Sunday, a Cyber Monday episode. Uh, you going away for Thanksgiving? Juice, I'm staying in town, my brother. Yeah, Michael Bradley says, No worries. Happy Thanksgiving, you guys, oh, too, man. George tunes in. George, I just finished your video, by the way, today. George, who? Uh, George, I oh, took Potash. him on a guide trip. Yeah, I took him on a guide trip, and uh, I've been slacking. I finally finished his video today, so I'm oh, proud cool, of man. I did something. Ah, awesome, awesome. But yeah, George, and get, then, get up here, man. So let's use the de time off to really think about a schedule oh, and geez, maybe some Eric, guests. And, on, you know, man. look, dude, look, dude, look, dude. That come was on, really fantastic. Bro. I need that, bro. Come on now, come on. We'll think about a schedule. And we'll think about people that we can have on. Look, you got Zona. The olive branch has been passed. You had a very interesting text from Dave Mansu for those of you guys who uh, were here for the oh, state shit. date. We're going to bring that up. Oh, dude. That was... Travis finally got the answer for uh, for Big So, so I broke down today. So let me tell you my, my story. You know, I was in the marsh. I froze to death, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Yep. I come back. And I detailed my bass boat. By anyways, by the way, if anyone wants to buy my Camus 2023 21 foot Camus, it's going to be for sale shortly. What's um, the asking price in case anybody wants to get on early on the deal? Twenty percent off. Twenty percent off only tonight through the Bass Lab. <laughs> Cyber Monday. Uh seventy eight nine. Fully loaded eighty six. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, I detailed and I put it in the other shed. Um, and then I went to, uh, what else did I do today? What, what, where was I going with this? I don't know, man. What, no, what was I going to say? I don't know. Hmm. I can't think now. Um, I lost track. <laughs> I'm speechless, bro. Uh, I think we were talking about your K, you know, uh, K miss what it was for sale. How much is it? Uh, it's not 20% off. Oh right? yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. I asked you what the boat would retail for. Got it. With all that you're selling on it. Do you have a thought or anything you could share with people is that a ninety thousand dollar boat if they went to bright new 95 oh, I'd be over that um so it'd yeah. be a hundred hundred thousand rigged away your are you leaving yeah. all of your electronics on it oh okay i get it so then so i i rigged the boat yeah you I detailed it some, i need to get some stainless steel uh washers right yeah so i had to go to the home depot and then okay. i was hungry so then i was like you know what? I need to go to uh, what's that place where they yell uh, "Welcome to Moe's." So I go to Moe's, right? And because I love their nachos there. Um, yeah. But there was a line twenty deep, bro. I'm like, oh, screw this. I'm up. Yeah. So now I'm like freaking out because I really wanted to go to Moe's. Right. Um, so I look around. I was gonna go to Chick Fil A because I I haven't gone to Chick Fil A a lot, but the last time I went there, it was kind of cool. Like. Uh, 
they were just friendly. They asked your name and oh yeah, they do. Yep. The chicken nuggets were good. You know, the honey mustard sauce was good. Uh and to the right of me, I saw five guys. I remember five guys. I I ate there once like two years ago in Philadelphia. I'm like, screw it. I want to go to the five guys, right? So I yep. go in there and I like really I'm starving. I like I want to their burgers are nasty, right? Like nasty good, but like it's not healthy. Large fries, like overflowing. I get jalapenos, cheese, ketchup, mustard, yep, lettuce, bacon cheeseburger, right? Yep. I almost got a chocolate shake, but I didn't. So yep. now I'm sitting down. They call my number, number 35. I go grab my food. I'm ready to fucking dig in, dude. I'm starving. <laughs> All of a sudden, I get a text. Uh -oh. So I got to look at it. It's Dave Mansu. <laughs> I'm reading this text. And it's long. It's long, and I can't even get through the thing. And Matt calls me. Now I got to take Matt's call. Matt's like, Hanger oh, does. text from Dave. Oh, he copied both of you. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, oh and BTL. So then BTL goes, so this is what Brian the Carpenter texts me later today. He no, goes, BTC. He copied yeah, BTC. Yeah, said BTC. BTL. Yeah. He goes, this is the only, this is what he wrote. Okay. You're going to read it on the air. I go. <laughs> What'd you say? Like right here. Here's the text. Uh, uh, all right. I see it. Yep. Oh, uh, no, LOL. <laughs> Travis sent me the text that Dave Mansu sent to Travis earlier. And, and I thought it was going to be like maybe just a paragraph. It was like four paragraphs long. He's very thankful to the Smallmouth Crush fans. He did want to say that. Donate. And I uh, wishes everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Right. And, He's stoked uh, about the Tomahawks. Cool, he they he's fucking cool. He, he, Dave's he's, cool as shit. He saved the tomahawk steaks. He's been sharing the rest of the steaks with uh, people. So he yep. shared the the bounty, the 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 bounty from the smallmouth crush viewers. Yes. And um, I mean, there is more. Uh huh. <laughs> oh shit, Pete goes. I thought you were eating healthy, Pete. I was, but I decided to wait because obviously you can see I'm drinking some founders. Yep. After Thanksgiving, I'm gonna really get into it again. You are. Even Joe goes, "What happened? Eating clean? Yeah, I fell off, bro. I fell off. Yeah. I, would you say you fall off more than you fall on? Uh, I say when I really get into it. Once I commit, there ain't no going yeah. back. Oh damn. Yeah. Damn. Uh huh. Damn. That's hardcore, man. Let's see what we got here in the comments. That's hardcore. <laughs> Does the canvas come with duck slime? No, I don't shoot any birds. On <laughs> Although. Oh, did I tell you I fished with uh, Great Lakes Finesse last week? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, dude, you called me on the water. I was on your live. Oh, yeah, that's right. What the hell's wrong with you? Oh. <laughs> I was like, hmm. Yeah, yeah, how was it? Good? Yeah, we caught him. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll yeah, tell you what. I was, remember I was trying to get you guys a triple hookup? I, I, was, I was a little nervous because... The consistent beta choice wasn't in the Great Lakes finesse lineup previously. You, okay. Con consistent choice wasn't in the Great Lakes. What do you mean? The consistent bite wasn't in the Great Lakes finesse lineup. Oh, so you're worried that they would bite it, but we I all was know those worried small mouth we bite. weren't going to catch anything. Dude, those smallmouth bite anything. Well, let me tell you a story. Okay. Tell me a story. Enlighten us. Do they or don't they? Oh, they don't always the blade bait, right? And it's trying to go to town. Yep. What and happened? They are in the back of the boat with a snack craw. Yep. Slinging it up there, and like I think the first fish was over six pounds. On um, the snack craw. Yeah, and I, and I I fought it for a little bit. I had one tied on, but it was on a light jig head. It was like on eighth ounce, and they were throwing three A's. Right. Um, 
I'm like, all right, give me one of them. Let's, let's do it. And we, we had a freaking pretty good day, you know, not the greatest. We had 28 yeah. pounds, but not yeah. like it wasn't, I shouldn't say that there was times where it was good. And then yeah. we'd go for 20, 30 minutes and only catch, you know, three or four. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, that's uh, just, it's just fishing. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I'm glad you had a good day, man. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Is it time to pick the winner? In a little bit. I'm not done talking yet. Oh, okay. I thought I thought you thought you were done, bro. You want to end the show already? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> so, what was the winning bait that day? Was it the snack crawl? The, the it winner? was the snack crawl and green pumpkin, and we used a three eighth ounce high tech football head, and we pulled the weed guard out of it. Yep. So just using a like a like a, like an open jig head. No you know, Z man. You, I still can't get you on that Z man one, dude. I guess they don't make that in three eighths. Oh, maybe they do. I don't have any. Don't so crazy to me that you haven't yeah. switched, made the switch. You would lose a lot less shit. Yeah. That's the fact. Think Juice I'm, Newton, can he clean wearing a beard like that? So I'm growing it out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, um, let's see it come closer. I see some grays in there. There ain't bro. much. There's a little bit right here, bro. I see the grays, dude. You're getting old, man. I like it, dude. I mean, at some point, bro, it's going to happen. You can't fight father time, man. Hey, listen, we'll, I'm not even going to say it. Never mind. I had a Go very ahead. funny thing. I'm not doing it. Okay, good. Thank you. But but Thank it would have been very funny if I had said it. Okay. I think that would have been good. People would have liked it. Yeah. But I won't do it. Yeah. All right. So how long are you going to grow that beard? Are you participating in no shave November? Until it gets itchy. Uh, is that, is that, have you had it that long a before? more days. Yeah. You have? What's the yeah. longest you've ever had a beard? It's about as long as I can go. I, it's That's hard to it. fight through it. Just, yeah, the itches. Because then you have to it. buy these fucking oils and shit and rub it in there. And, uh, yeah. Does you your wife your like the beard? Your fucking beard and shit. I got enough. I got to pluck my fucking eyebrows every three days, bro. You Does know? your, <laughs> no, I don't know, but anyway, all it's right. Hard enough to, to, your... groom, to keep groom, bro. It's hard I enough. Know. Does your wife like the beard? Nah, she don't really comment on it. Okay. It's not like she's like, oh man, I like that beard, man. I think keep it's it going. Weird. Yeah. She's just, she's, she's neutral on the beard. I had it's not like you got it. Conference tonight. How'd that work out? So I had this big ruffy beard, right? And I got yep. my uh you duck boots on head work pants on. Mm -hmm. Got this barn jacket on, redhead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got this flannel on. Yeah. You know, I walked in there like I was in construction or something. You know what I mean? Right. I, I felt like uh <laughs> felt like a man walking in. Yeah. There. All right. And yeah. how how did it go? What was the report on little Cole? Excellent. I'm getting Excellent. I even okay, told good. her, I'm like, there's no point in me going. I know what they're going to say already. What are they going to say? What'd good, you, good, good, think? excellent, amazing, blah, blah, blah. Did you have anything to tell them about what the hell they're teaching your kid? No. So the teachers actually, uh, well, let me tell you this. What what courses is he learning right now? I, th I think he's in kindergarten. It's called kindergarten, but all right. I That's used to call it kindergarten. Said. I used to call it kindy too. Okay. I prefer I prefer kindergarten. The teacher is uh, very religious, I think. Okay. So I'm is fine. Is this a public with that. school or a private school? Public. Public or private? Public. Okay. He is so going as to long as school. she's on that religious, which I don't, I'm not in that reality tunnel, but at least yeah. she's probably not talking about you know transgender stuff and things like. Oh, by the way, by the way, I do want to make this announcement. All right. Okay, cool. That was a weird this, comment, but anyway, go ahead. It me off a little bit. Okay, okay. I took a picture of it. You got something to gripe about, I figured. I do. <laughs> Man, if you saw my photos. Yeah. What photos? Like on your on your on your Like I take photos of things so I remember it like I saw these uh, sticky globes. 
So I just take a photo of it so I can order them. Eric, look. Oh, yeah. What are those? I don't know. They look like a cool toy. Um, where is it? I can't find it right now, but rumor has it, Eric, that there, uh, there's like a committee for birds. And they're trying to change the name of three ducks because it's not politically correct what? anymore. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. That's I swear crazy. I saw it the other day. I I think maybe that where did you see it is the I, first it's question. It's legit. It was some fucking waterfall. But you're sure what? it's legit? It's legit. Okay. That's then. Sound off, man. Get involved. I'm just saying. It, do you know what ducks they are? Uh, it was the Barrows Golden Eye, uh, the Eider, what's, something else. What's, what's wrong with those? I guess the guy that founded the Eider used to own a, a, a couple slaves or something. I don't know the backstory, but uh, whatever. Got it's it. ridiculous. Okay. So they want to go with another name. Because they feel like this person supported slavery. They took so old squaws, long tails used to be old squaws. Old squaw is like uh an Indian term. That's right. For a female. And, That's right. Uh, and now they want it to be long tails. I still call them old squaws. That's what they were called when I was growing up. Well, then you can you can do it. Nobody's gonna make you sit, change your ways, right? That's right. Anyways, I just thought it was interesting. It is, man. But I mean, you'll just keep using what you know, and it won't make your life better or worse, will it? No. It'll irritate you that they're even talking no, about it. No, I don't it. care. That's for the collective. I told you I don't care oh, about well, it. Yeah, okay, but it sounded like you were a little bit spun. No, I looked at it uh, uh, and I thought I'd take I a did. picture of the report. Well, that's the, the, you've, you're enlightened now. There yes. you go. You're enlightened. I love it. Yes. It will make life worse. Banned again. <laughs> Who's banned again? <laughs> uh, Dale says that'll get you beat up in Arizona. <laughs> it's important to care. Banned again. I don't know who banned again is. Seems like a new person because it can't be Pete. Pete is still Pete Jablowski. No, um, Pete, speaking of Pete, Pete made a comment earlier about uh, Thanksgiving and the real blah, blah, blah and the massacre with Native Americans. Um, mm -hmm. most of that there. went down because don't, the natives don't. knew they don't, knew what was going go on there. here. I'm this, just telling don't, you, don't, don't go there. It's just, it's just been a great reset, stream, man. I, I'm just gonna have to, I'm gonna push my button, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna push my button. Why don't you go ahead? It's been I'm a delightful good. show, man. I'm not gonna, I'm not We're gonna not let going these there. viewers date you. I'm not going to let you cast a cloud on this wonderful stream with the llama, Seth Fighter, Canvas Back, for sure. Right? Canvas Back, babe. Yeah, you got a bunch of old Ducks Unlimited stuff. I got some prints coming up for you, bro. A lot of wildlife prints coming up for you. Really? I got I oh, I got gifts coming your way, bro. All sorts of wildlife. Dogs, ducks, deers, man. You'll be able to outfit your entire garage with art. Oh, yeah. You won't know what to do with it. Mm. Anyway. Um. Is oh, it time dude. to pick the winner? Yes, yeah. last I was I was getting the duck boat ready and I saw some lights in the sky. Oh, that did a bunch of zigzagging. And I just thought, man, this is this is interesting and I stared at it for I actually sat there for a little while and watched it. I was thinking about getting other witnesses to come see it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. they really wouldn't care. And then yeah. uh, the thing was hovering all over the place out here. And now, granted, I live near Fort Drum, which is a huge military base. So yeah, uh, anything could be up in the air there. But Very true. Very, very true. unusual activity but last night here. That's cool, man. It keeps the old brain bucket working. What else, man? All right, we got to pick a what winner. You, what, pick a winner. Rando drawing. 
Oh, let's see. Hey, I just want to show something that I did. Look at what you could do with a somatic shot, Travis. How cool is that, bro? <laughs> don't nice. don't tell me. I know Jamie's still watching. And I used uh I did a technique. If you're interested in knowing how to modify your somatic shot, just give me a shout. But that's badass right there. Don't throw away your old skirts, is all I gotta say. And maybe that would get bit. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I got them on the site. Twenty okay. percent off. Are we ready? All week long. Yeah. All right. Super Tonight's chat, winner for the uh, super chat. We appreciate everyone who entered. Pink Hook, Lee, Darius, Omerta, E Stack, Band again, Band again, Tom, Juice, Fred. Who else we got? Travis, MC, MJ. And it is. Oh, I'm not even gonna be able to say click the that. Cl right, cl click that button. Did you click Fred, the button yet? Fred Halabu. All right, congratulations, Fred. You're our uh, random H -A -L -A -B -O -U. winner. H a l a b o u. Halabu. There you go. There it is, man. Congratulations. You're the winner of tonight's drawing. That was a really good package in a used Monster Bass box. There's a lot of good juju in that box. Thank you. That box was part of the 35-pound uh, bag that I caught solo. There you go. On Ontario. Boom. All right. Starling. Yeah, Get man. Andy, Andy B. Andy, Andy B. knows what's up. <laughs> Let's go, Fred. Congrats. Halibu like Malibu, man. There it is. You got dang right. That sounds like Malibu. Malibu. Looks like you're standing. I think he's standing on a mountain. I, think I don't know. I can't see. It's such a tiny icon. I bought this in the antique store. Yep. It's 1979. This is 40 some years old. Yeah. Get out. It was uh, liquor was in there. Oh, buddy. <laughs> There's nothing in that, man, no, for real. No. That was pretty good, though. I was That was awesome. <laughs> Just swinging it down. Uh, was Fred, reach out to me, either Travis at smallmouthcrush.com or Instagram. DM me uh, with your uh, with your uh, shipping address, and we'll get that sent out to you. Perfect, man. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And remember, 20% off on the entire site, entire Bass Lab site. Man. Yep. This week only. Oof. And I'll have some new stock coming in throughout the week. So be sure to check back because you never know. We got some some new uh new stuff coming in. Right on. White Claw awesome, bro. I, I haven't drank white claw in, in a good year and a half. What's Remember the new that drink? one summer? I was so it was the hottest into summer it. ever. And you were into it, boy. You were hitting them white claws up. Uh, Black. Black blackberry, was it blackberry? Cherry, cherry. That's right. Cherry. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving, yeah. everybody. I hope everybody has a that's wonderful right. holiday. Yeah, man. I'll Good stuff. Thanksgiving. <laughs> of course you wouldn't. Who's calling you there, bud? Let's find out. Matt. Pinhook. Pinhook. <laughs> this is a Marty Burns crankbait. It's a little yeah. custom build I had him do, painted by TK Stanley. That one, that one was fire. I like that. Up at Will's. Remember I caught the big small of the day on that one when we were cranking? I don't remember. Take a look that. at that. TK Stanley from the mind of TK Stanley. It's got a little flake in it. If I had to describe the flake, I would call it green. A little brown fleck, but uh, yeah, man. And that hot orange belly. TK don't like a full hot orange belly, but I do for certain situations. Some people just like a little whisper orange. Nah, man, I'm going to go full orange, man. I want to give them the goods. I want to give them the goods. Fluorescent. <laughs> who, who was it? No. What happened? Oh, Kuda said, read the text. He, he wants you to funny. read it. People are funny. What's that? I, I got you, man. People are funny. 10-4, man. 
Ten four. Ten four. Ten four. We're going to see here. They will. Absolutely, man. Um, yeah, dude, listen, tonight's guest, I think I thought Seth was pretty. I've always, uh, the dude's cool. You know what I mean? I'm glad he's done well. Um, hell of a fisherman down to earth. You know what I mean? Very much so. Yeah. What was I doing? I don't know, bro. What were you doing? I was distracted. Right? I'm going to send Seth a picture because he ain't just getting one crankbait. Oh. Yeah. You know. Might have to talk to Marty Burns if he wants me to send him any other ones in TK. So Seth knows what's up. Oh, how was the uh, bass after dark? I was good, man. Which one was that about? Eric. Oh, the Bass After Dark. The first one that I watched I was who would be on that one. one. Yeah, we talked about the second one was, is being a Bass Pro um, a good career choice or a folly or a fool's errand? Okay. And Juice, hit me up. Um, hit, me, hit me up uh, later. T tomorrow. Call me tomorrow, bro. Yes. <laughs> Andy B, I'll send him a worm with some hair in it. Come on. <laughs> Throw in a crankbait to those who put an order in tonight with the Bass Lab. Just grab Maybe one I off will. Maybe I'll throw in one of my favorite balsa baits. But I got to get a certain number of orders. And yeah, what are some of the uh, Black Friday deals? Um, I'm going to buy some Sitka gear. I love their pants, dude. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, man, I will put in a uh, – I'll put in one of my favorite balls of crankbaits oh, in, 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 the, in the giveaway. To Did that, you guys hear Eric. that for the, the people? How many people are still watching? I'm feeling generous. 150. Yeah, well, for those who stayed and watched and those for who those watched that the whole stuck stream around, we got the next day. We got a special announcement from the man. Matt. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. What? I was I got suckered into this deal. <laughs> what? Well, how so? How like so? Smell. Two special announcements. Nothing. Hangers I just, on. I, I fired up the fireplace. I sent a picture to Travis, and I just said he looked like he was about ready to go chop down a pine tree. No, you said how was crabbing <laughs> in the Arctic? Yeah, and then I said, "What? Well, tell us what it was like crab fishing in the Arctic." <laughs> crabbing in the Arctic. And now all of a sudden, I'm on here. Oh, I fucking we're, love we're it, We're not going to keep you long because we're all trying to get off, actually. Hanger, I've been I've been asking Travis to get Seth Fighter on literally for three years running, and he finally did it. I know. That's exciting. That's as I got it fired up. Like I said, I got the fireplace going. It's 40 degrees out here. Got everything blocked and loaded, ready to roll. Just Man. enjoying the Where are you headed? What crush. are you doing? Are you, uh, you know are you fishing anymore this year? Are you done? Are you chasing uh, I'm getting crappie? Ready to crappie. I know you the crappie are crappie. getting good. We need like two more nights like this, and they'll start suspending. So you got that thirty foot right on sixteen footer. Yeah. No, 16. is that what is that what your mm. your thing is this time of year? Yeah, yeah, sixteen foot, thirty pound braid, quarter ounce jig, two x hook on it, bait caster. Damn, you go out and. Wreck How many them. can you catch in a day? If you're just going to to catch them, thirty to fifty. But if you're go if you're hunting like the big ones, you're talking like three to eight. Oh, and how big is a big crappy? Three pounder. Those oh my big. god, I didn't make like any a, sense. I anywhere from I, can't even, I don't sixteen even, and a half to nineteen inches. They fight, right? I don't even understand. No, you. That set it like that and then it don't and you go you just lift them straight up and you just they just come up a 
cross the surface and you just keep them coming, muscle them in like they're zero fight. So up north, we we had a nickname for crappie and they were called paper mouths. Yeah, no, these things are like beasts. These things are not paper mouths. They don't rip. Their mouths don't rip. No, they're they're meaty. Mm. I mean, they're they're meaty. They just float out there like blimps. Wow. Damn. Yeah. All right. That's crazy. Three pounds. It just doesn't make any sense. My brain cannot wrap around no, a like three a... pound crappy. I can't. Yeah. I can't. Crappie. It's like just what I they're doing envision. with the bass stuff here. Like the, like a eight, like a 10 pounder now is like an eight, like an eight or seven used to be like a 12 or 13 is like a 10 used to be. So like the crappie, everything happened in that. Oh. It used to be like a two pound crappie was like something you catch maybe once every couple of years if you were good. And now like two pounders, the new pound and a half. Wow. Yeah. It's fun. I mean, it's wow. no what is the but... world record crappy? What's the, what... I want to say five and a half, six pounds. <laughs> What's the, the world white record crappy? Black are pretty much the same. Wow. I think right around Where five come... and a half, six pounds. Where... Yeah. You can go to. Bass Pro Shops in Springfield, Where, and they got some four and a half, five pounders swimming around. Huh. Where'd it come from, the world record? Uh, I don't know. I know Minnesota has some big ones. I think uh, Lake Fork has some monsters mm. in it. Mm. Kerr Lake has some pretty big ones in North Carolina where you were for your open. Really? Oh, yeah. I caught I caught a, yeah, Chris almost Bullock a 17 chases. incher on a jerk he, bait. He's out probably. Of Yeah, it was monster. Hmm. He's not you excited to have Seth on. He's that's a, a legendary winder. That's a big get for the program. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll let you get back to your fire. We're gonna wrap the show up, anyways. What? <laughs> what? Are you trying to not act excited that you've got Fighter Man coming on? Are you trying no. to see so, about it? I mean, I, I, Epic Eric so is jacked up. Yeah. You're just over there like, oh, we got, oh, we got state, state gate to talk about. We can't really talk about it. It's over with. It's done. It's in the that was a good ending to it, though. <laughs> it was a good ending. Yeah. It, it, it was played. For everybody well played. but one person. It was well played. True. Well yes. played. State gate. Well played. I figured you were just going to read it. That's what I thought. Uh uh. Out of respect. Well, I Why won't you? That would be disrespecting. It was. No, it was a, it was a, uh, Dave That's said a, a, a message at email and it was probably the most well written thing that I've read in the past five years. Not kidding. No, no joke. Like it was, it was witty. I agree. It was, it was very poignant. It was thoughtful. It was complimentary. Yes. Yes. All those things. The, the, um, Yes, it had certain passages that I uh, I ate like a fine steak. I mean, it was every bite was delicious. The words were crafted. Um, there were some subtle double meanings in there, um, <laughs> and it was definitive in its nature. Oh. Yes, all those things, Matt. It was brilliantly written. Pete still found the one channel he's not blocked on yet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yep. Mm. <laughs> All right. What time you got what time you got fighter coming on? He already was on. Oh, he was? Yeah, it's 10 o'clock, dude. <laughs> oh dang, we're already the after. Oh, I thought I was just like killing time till he came on. I was at oh. Lowe's. I was at Lowe's looking for a fireplace mantle for the last hour. Holy uh, shit, really? Those things are hard to find. So I moved to this house almost two years ago. They took the damn mantle with them. Like, who does that? I've just what? got two pegs sticking out above the fireplace. You, why don't you Okay, that's old, bizarre. That's uh, seriously like bizarre. Railroad trestle wood or something. Because, no. so, because it's like two, look at the picture I sent you. It's like two two by fours that are sticking out of the wall in the fireplace. Yeah, it looked romantic. <laughs> what is that a real fire you could place? have somebody make a 
uh i mean yeah it's a it's a dual fireplace so it's either a uh it's it can be gas or it can be uh like it looks yeah it looks uh old world yeah but see like zoom in above it see those giant bags um, where they just rip the mantle off the damn wall let's see that so matt they make these really nice uh they make these really nice box mantles. Um, That's I bought one online. I I gave them the dimensions, man, and it's old barn wood. It's beautiful. I put it in my uh, beach house. Really? Down in the Outer Banks, yeah. You yeah, got I a beach house from doing the Smallmouth Crush podcast? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I I did. <laughs> <laughs> Secondary income there. All goes to the beach yeah. house. Well, all, every penny. I'll Every to, penny. I'll have to rewind and watch it then. I've this getting dark at six is screwed with my time, so I, I have think no it's screwed with everybody's time. Yeah, I, know, I have no real good uh, gauge of where the time is. Yep. Uh, dude, what do you think of the elite schedule? Elite have schedule. You already is talked good. about. I mean, it's a it's a solid it's a solid schedule. Do you think they set it up for Milliken to live scope? In Texas. No, they set it up for a lot of the open guys coming in though, because four of the events are on uh venues where the opens were. Oh wow. So, so half they... of the tournaments, the guys are already like dialed in, you know, when when they go there because they've they fished the open there the year before. So I I look for the opens guys to have a really good year this year. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Very interesting. Um let me. I'm trying to find you a picture of this, bro. Oh, here we go. Of the man. Yeah. No, I, I see what you mean. It's like a box because I mounted my TV above it. It's kind of a screwy deal. Yeah, it's a box beam. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you did. So, so the the two by fours. You're not looking. You're just looking for a mantle, just a straight yeah, just mantle. like a box, and then you put it on top, and then it looks like right. it's like a solid beam. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Up gotcha. on top of it. Yeah. Ten four. I got gotcha. you. Um. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> what the fuck, Travis? Growing a beard like that is hard work. It takes a lot of concentration. Do once it grows, do you have to you have to put oil and stuff in it, right? I I can't. I mean, it takes me months to grow facial hair. Huh. But I, I do, do know. I mean, I would recommend maybe some beard oil. I know that like. Uh, Target or Walmart has a good some good beard oils where you can kind of massage it in there and make it nice and you know yeah. it promotes growth gives it some healthy rejuvenation. Okay, you treat it like kind of like a chia pet. <laughs> How long what? are you letting this thing go? I I just you know it's I'm not sure. It's kind of I, I don't know. it appears to be on the TV. It appears to be somewhat salt and peppery. <laughs> Panger, can you see that? Yep. Yep. There it is, man. It's old yep. barn wood. That's exactly. That's a yeah. Send that to me. Yep. Salt and pepper. So yeah, I have some gray. Because here's what I'm working with, Eric. Eric, look at that. Oh, that'd be cool, dude. Yeah, I, I, I I'm trying to see where are those two by fours because you got brick, right? Yeah, but see, look, they're just like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be perfect, man. You it's all weird. you have to do is give them the length and the dimensions of the the two by fours, and they build a box, and man, it's just you'd be set. I'm saying it's pretty you. salt and peppery, Travis. I mean, it looks good. Like, do not you can't now that you've been seen in public with it, you can't do the just. No, for I men. do, and I will. I have just for men beard. You're gonna uh, comb it in there. Yeah, you just go like this. I do it. I do it quite a bit when I. Keep it shorter. I think I just got it. I think especially yeah. if you're doing more like abstract guiding, I think it gives you more credibility. Because like who doesn't <laughs> trust a guy with the salt and pepper beard, right? Abstract guiding. That's a, who would ever well, put those two words together? Abstract ducks, walleye, guiding. trout, oh, yeah. salmon, but, flounder, whatever you. else is in Lake Ontario, <laughs> ale wife. Aliens. <laughs> oh yeah. Eric, that looks perfect. Yeah, right. Yep. And it wasn't it wasn't expensive, man. And they have all sorts of barn wood and finishes to pick from, man. It was clean. 
did it perfect and it was a very easy mount yeah mm. yeah I, I i i i don't know man i got it that was You're nine not. years ago Barnwood. Well, what happened? What happened, bro? You guys glitching. Uh, Matt, what do you have going on at over at BTL? You had uh Bradley Hallman on recently. Uh yeah, had Hallman on talk about his retirement, had Jordan Lee on last week talking about coming back to the wow. Elite series, had Hank Parker on last week, which was a cool show. Talking oh, to what Hank had to talk about. He just shot a huge buck, I saw. Really? Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh God, no, I talked to Hank about dude. a bunch of stuff, but mainly like the TV wars back in the day about like the race with him versus Bill and uh, Jimmy and Roland and stuff about how they all wow. like had all this technology and cameras. They all tried to hide it from each other so they could each That's get the awesome. better show and they'd cool. watch each other's stuff because I mean, that was the only show in town. That's cool. Yeah. I have to watch the replay. Yep. Did you That's talk about his uh, re-release of a spinner bait? He did. He actually talked about it and why he goes with the twist instead of the R bend and the diameter of the why you know all the all the good stuff that you guys yeah, really just, talk about and the blade yeah, and the whole just, nine thing. He just signed with X Zone. And he I did saw. just sign with X Zone. Wow. How about that? After like twenty five years with uh with Man. Is pure. he with Berkeley anymore? No. No. Gone. Why? Uh didn't get to that part in the interview. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> what the? F yeah, that's huge. I I hey, talked to him a little bit. We, what is going on? We didn't get to it, but I talked to him off air about uh the cast for cash. You remember when they used to yeah give a million class. dollars for the cast for cash? Yes. Yep. And uh, he said what people don't realize is he said the very first guy who ever did it uh put it right in the fish's mouth. And in his excitement, yanked the rod back, ripped it out of the fish's mouth and got nothing, had a million dollars, made the cast, and then screwed it up on the back end. No way. He said he was standing right next to him, watched the whole thing go down. He said he was just shocked. Like it was in, like million dollars headed his way. And he was like, ah, and like ripped the plug out of that. You know, they'd cast it the classic. Holy shit. Yeah, lost a million bucks. I think he ended up getting like a three month supply of motor oil power worms. Oh my God, that's <laughs> crazy. Wow. What in the hell? Wow. Wow. I Damn. can't believe he's not with Burke. So he has all these little generals just laying around now with nothing to do. Yeah, shoot yeah, a you, DM. I'm sure, I'm sure you could I, slide into the DMs. I'd, I'd I'd reach out to him. I got his personal number. <laughs> you fish with them, haven't you? Yeah. You got yeah. yeah you fish with them too, haven't you, Travis? Yeah, we filmed. Yeah. It. And he came a up a couple years ago. Dirty little secret involved in that filming, which I will not reveal, but one day I may. Because Travis, well, you Manson, said now that he's not with Berkeley, I think I'll call him up and say, Hank, I want to let you know something about Travis Manson. This will be the Berkeley Gate episode. I think we should have him on the show. In fact, if I could get him on the show, would you want to have him on the show, Travis? Yeah, we'll get him on eventually. Dude, if you I went mean, Fighter and Hank Parker back to back, that would be that'd be a banger. Is that I all I gotta do? Is just get big names? I thought just I, I honestly don't know if we got the clout to get Hank Parker on. We're not. I mean, BTL is a serious bass show. Yeah. This show is a train wreck and zany and so there's the right type of bass pro that will agree to come on i think oh at this yeah point. Yeah, yeah i've so. had yeah i've had some people that were a little nervous to come on here yeah i'm sure i'm but. nervous every time i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh oh uh, boy i i wanted to keep it on the rails as a fishing show but just spun out somehow. I don't know how, but it did. It's evolved. I, I cannot it, believe he's not that's with her a, anymore. This that's a very polite way to thank you, Matt. Thank you for being polite, Matt. No, it has. It it's has evolved. evolved. Like, I mean, you can only do the same thing so many times, so then you have to evolve and change. What's this world like, coming to? That, that, uh, that's yeah, the same thing I asked when I logged on and saw what was on your face. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, man. Damn. That's crazy. That's crazy. Look at that. Travis with the facial hair and Epic Eric with the vest. Never thought I'd see the day. What is going on, dude? It's like the, the world's upside down, and Hank is now with Exome, not Berkeley. <laughs> That's a triple. That's a trifecta. You got yeah. facial hair. I got a vest on. Hank went to Exxon and not with Berkeley. That's all. You, something's going on. There's something <laughs> happening in the universe right now that we cannot explain. I don't even know what to say. Neither do I. You're stunned, dude. It's like somebody shot you with a stun gun. It's just like uh, I don't understand the mark. Like Hank is Hank's been Berkeley forever. X sounds a good fit for him, though. I've seen him try to catch smallmouth, Matt. <laughs> they make a lot of largemouth stuff. I'm just saying. He's a big fan of the six inch, like the trick worm. He went through I'm like sure. a 10 minute deal on what makes a good trick worm. It was the greatest, uh -huh. like, late 80s segment ever. Because right, I could picture, man. like, Harold Allen watching it going, Yeah, Hank, preach. <laughs> is the trick worm no longer a player i mean not not i mean it is but it's more of a player on a you know a ball head or a drop shot or something yeah. like that i mean this is just a straight up texas rig six six trick worm true and he went on for a whole what makes a great trick worm for 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 basically texas rigging yeah Oh, I gotta, I gotta listen to that. I want to just something like float on the tail, a little bit wider, different fall in it, like just the way the the way that the worm is built. Which I mean, it just looks like a trick worm to me. <laughs> you weren't thinking about you know wide here, thin there, float tail, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I got you. I got you. Ten four. I've seen the magic of a trick worm plenty of times. When have you seen the magic of a trick worm? When, With you, I've never, I've never even seen you throw a trick worm. I have. When did you throw a trick worm with me? Oh, you watched me throw the trick worm. I threw a trick worm in Florida once, a June. Bug. You watched me throw a trick worm <laughs> when we should have won that tournament. When I caught a six three three yeah. to start, right? You, yep. And then I went against that wall, and I was Nico Riggin. All right, hold on. CCRR goes get Clark Ream and Milliken on at the same time. Is there beef between those two? Uh, yeah. There is? Uh, yeah, just go watch. Yeah, I got both sides of that deal. It's an interesting. It's just a. Uh, Tell me this breakdown. Yeah, you just you just go watch Milliken's videos from uh, Florida. Okay. And then go on Texas Fishing Forum and read Clark Reeves' post. And then you'll have the whole thing. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, okay. Why can't anyone just talk about it? Because it's just, it's not, it's not even really a thing. It's like a the Dave Mansu State Gate thing. We just don't. Yeah, talk it's kind of like it it's kind of like State Gate. All right. Well, then I get it. How about Zeldane and Milliken? Is there any beef between them two? I don't know. Well, you're supposed to know everything. <laughs> I just stay in my lane. I know. <laughs> oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy so i just watched i heard about it remember when uh that guy they were fishing some ledge in tennessee and what's his name uh they were bumper to bumper with their boats oh yeah 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 the uh, As ledge like, guy. It, i'm gonna go home and do some yard work oh Jason. yeah that was legendary that was Jason, Randy, Haynes, Lambert, yeah, and, and, Haynes. and Lambert, Jason Lambert. That had to have been the most epic on the water confrontation ever. Yeah, that was a good one. That's what. That's what we need to have a show on. And then there was that the Ike one where he was he was scanning the grass edge. Remember that one? 
Oh, where I posted where the guy got upset with him at the Potomac? It might have been. And then obviously there was the Ike versus the dog, and then there was the Ike versus the flag, and then there was the Ike versus Kevin. (laughs) Yes. And then wasn't Kevin, though, at the Hall of Fame? And like, did Yes, and Ike Ike got up and told Kevin that he's now part of the community because he's in the Hall of Fame. He said that? Yeah, in the speech. And then said, uh, and then said that he was glad that he got in ahead of the male stripper <laughs> in his speech at the <laughs> Hall of Fame on stage in front of everybody. Oh my God! Yeah, it was it was great. He took a couple of he took a couple of shots in a classy way. Whoa! Oh my God, these guys! Wow! I mean, it's bass fishing. Yeah, dude. That was funny. Uh, Tharp versus... Yeah, I saw that one. That was a good one. Tharp Matt, versus Hair. Yeah. I mean, the mm. best one is obviously Ish versus Poche. But that oh, was yeah. kind of a long way. You know, that was a ways back. But that so wasn't on... Uh, that wasn't broadcast. There's like, there's no video of that. No. Yeah. There is a mug shot, though. Right, but that one, that one turned out. I mean, the, yeah, there's been a was bunch. Was he the male dancer? It, was that what he's referring to? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, these comments. I don't. I don't understand to take people serious or not. Oh yeah, there was a. Uh, One of the most heated ones that required armed guards at the weigh-in was Kevin Langell versus Boyd Duckett on Gunnersville. Oh, wow. Didn't somebody... Were you fishing then? You had to be fishing then, Travis. Didn't somebody once grab someone's waypoints in a hotel parking lot? That's alleged. Allegedly. And won the tournament off of them on Wheeler Lake. Oh God! Uh, but yeah, the Landro thing was wild with Boyd, because you know Boyd was just smiling, going, "Buddy, I wouldn't do that if I were you." And Landro ended up t-boning his boat and pushing him off the spot with his big motor while <laughs> Boyd was trying to fish. And then the lake authorities were called. Landro was escorted in, and then he got DQ'd. This is all as my memory recounts it, as I was there. And uh, wow. and then he showed up the next morning and parked in front of the ramp at Gunnersville and said, if I am not fishing, nobody's fishing. So then they had the cops come down and he finally got him to move his boat and everyone could put their boat in. And then he got in the boat and was poking Boyd in the chest. And then he said something like, I'm coming back to the way in. And wow. uh, they had like armed security guards there at the way in that day. Damn. How about uh, this is another legendary one. How about Travis versus the 2003 Green Bay Packers? Oh, jeez. <laughs> From TK Stanley. <laughs> We're stealing your girlfriend. Two of us. <laughs> that was legendary. They stole two of your girlfriends? Man. Damn, dude. The Green Bay Packers? Apparently. Ooh, that's rough. Got any pictures, <laughs> pictures of those girlfriends, dude? <laughs> that you could share in, in private with me and Matt. Promise oh not to post. God. Come on, man. Oh, you yeah. You had Carl, you had Carl and Boyd at Winya Bay in the uh was it the rice field? I don't remember. <laughs> Where Boyd was throwing the trap and Carl was throwing the speed worm on day two. Oh. And, and what was that beef about? Uh Carl was leading the tournament, and then Boyd ran down there on the second day. Uh and you know, there's one like in the in the uh, uh, the name of that Cooper River. You know, they have to go across the bay and all that, past all the battleships and in the salt water and in the Cooper River. There's like a, I want to say right. I don't know if it's rice or what it is, but yeah, yeah. Uh, there's one little field, and they both ended up in there. Damn, who won that argument? Uh, I think they both stayed. Oh, who caught more? Boyd on day two, he had like almost 20 pounds on day two, but Carl was leading after day one. 
Oof. But Carl's throwing a speed worm. Boyd or Justin threw a trap on day two, but I don't think Boyd was there on day two. I don't know. Mm, interesting. So, like the thing about bass fishing confrontations is the yeah. fact that it turns into a confrontation means that there's two sides to the Always. story. You yeah. know what I mean? There's each angler side and then there's the truth. Hmm. Did you ever get into it back in the visor days? Travis? I've, I've, the only time I've gotten into it was uh, <laughs> what? that show and tell. Joe Zombach says, Travis and me in Woman on the Potomac. I won. 2007. Yep. Uh, what happened, dude? Some dude was, uh, he was basically fishing right next to me, flipping the grass line. And, uh, we had some words. That was the only time. Then one, one tournament on the Potomac. I was in that community hall and, uh, it's never any one I know or any, it was just some other guy in a tournament we got. He got a little close to me, but that was it. I, I really have, I don't have too many confrontations on the water. Believe it or not, it's weird. You'd think I would have more. Yep. I. Oh, that one guy that was mad at you for filming on the upper bay. Oh, shit. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Uh, remember that FLW Costa that they on Lake Erie that they canceled day two and three. So it was the first first day one. So day one, it was me, my buddy Matt Stasiak, yep. uh, Johnston, a uh, couple guys out there. And we're all catching fish. Anyways, the, the day before when I found those fish, there was a uh, there was a chump in a rat boat that thought he was like somebody he, he's not you know who it is i can't i'd have to look at his i i don't remember his name he's a nobody but he had a rap boat mm -hmm. and uh i got kind of close to him and at the meeting that night he goes so that's how you like that's how you practice like he just he like got into my face He's like, man, I watched your YouTube channel. And this is when I first started my YouTube channel. Wouldn't like, have done that if you had facial hair. <laughs> he's like, I don't, you know, I think that was a dick move. You just pull up on people. You see people catching fish. And I was shocked because he was waving or yelling at me. I thought he was just waving to me. And uh, I kept fishing. But I guess he thought I got too close to him. It got like intense. Like I came, I went, I got up to his face. I said, "Bro, I don't even know who you are. I don't even know what you're talking about." Like I was pissed. Gray Buck was there, and uh, Matt Becker. I don't know if they saw it, but anyways, that was it. That was the only time. I don't even know the guy's name. I can't remember his name. He's in a Buffalo Bills rap boat. Did you keep fishing? Yeah. I almost gotcha. won the tournament there. They would have let us fish three days. Ah, gotcha. Weather gotcha. I don't know what'd if that you, guy was. Uh, what'd you I end up coming in? There. What'd you come in? How, uh, how'd you finish? He didn't do that good. No, you. I don't remember. How can you not remember? You said you almost won a tournament. Top 10, I get because they. It was a one day event. They canceled oh. day two and three and. Whatever place you were in on day one is where you ended up. I got you. So you yeah. top tended, but you felt like you had a chance to close the door on day two, day three. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we went out fishing on the third day. Oh, you did? Oh, Furnace Bay. Yeah, you're right, Joe. Ryan Bauman. What happened there? Okay. I'll tell this story. It's been a few years. So Ryan and I used to be pretty tight. Yeah. And, uh, Ryan told me they're in some grass and I should go in there. It's like new emerge grass, right? Always the best in the spring. Yeah. Well, 
He told me where to go, but it was in the community hall. No, this is where you don't understand. Oh, it takes you his side. Oh, I'll tell you right now because between me and you, I win in grass. I'm, I'm way more experienced. I know how to read it. I'm just going to tell you the facts. When we practiced for that one event that you did damn good in and almost won, I don't. You didn't know the difference between coontail and milfo, bro. Nice. No, you didn't know how to read. That's what I'm saying. So if you find in Furnace Bay the thickest grass early in the year, and it's a big area to cover, the size of two boats, you can win the tournament. Right. Anyways, we weren't fishing tournaments or anything. It was just out for fun. And well, I, decided is. Go, <laughs> I decided to go on Instagram and go live while I'm jacking them on a lipless crankbait, and all oh. eight people saw me, and he freaked the fuck out about it. Yeah, he did. Okay. That's it. too. If I took you to some thick grass and furnace before my spring tournaments, man, my club or whatever he fishes, dude, I'd have lit you oh, up. Jesus. Bro. Yeah, I feel like that was fair on his part. Yeah, he was. That was a that was a rookie move. It was. You're ex zoned, man. <laughs> it's like fine. <laughs> oh man, legendary. Man. For most enemies as a rookie, I don't know. Interesting don't comment. Know. Is that true? I think Milliken's no. a heck of a fisherman, man. A business he's person, like way smarter amazing. than people give him credit for. He knows he's what the hell he's doing. That dude's amazing. I agree. He knows what he, he's he he he's got it way figured out. He can catch him. I gotta go to bed. All good right. Good luck. On, good luck on your. Pete, I'll send you the rent check next week. <laughs> good luck on your mantle. See ya. Banger, let us know thank what you're doing. Thank you for that. Thank you and good luck with, uh, yeah, go get some three pounders. Hey, if you catch right. one, come, two, either of you guys want to come up this winter, all right, I got a spare bedroom. I mean, seriously, just let me know. January is the month, it's got to hey, be Liv like a week, 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 about a week out. I got to make sure we got calm weather. We can do three to a boat, no problem. Crazy, you guys just fly into Oklahoma City, I'll pick you up. Dang, it. PB hey, crappies, I can do? almost catch guarantee crappie, it. But we're only catching three or four a day. No, no, no. We'll do uh we'll do um a meat trip and then we'll do a trophy trip. Nice. We let any I let anything over I let anything over two pounds go. Oh shit. Anything under I mean a pound and three quarter crappie's a big crappie. Oh yeah, it is. But it's fun. I mean you drink beer, you stare at a live scope, <laughs> jack giant crappie, listen to music, you get out there around ten because they kind of start suspending a little bit later in the morning. And then you're off the water by three or four. Crazy. Play them, drink a few, throw some in the deep fryer. It's a fun day. <laughs> Sounds tasty. All right. Nice. Look at that. Lots All of right, trips. Matt. Thanks All for right, hanging Matt. out. Thanks for hanging out, man. See you guys. See you. Peace. Right. Good okay. show, bro. Good show, bro. Can we wrap this thing up? We could wrap it up, man. Go ahead. Do the outro. Well, not yet. Let's digest. Oh. Digress. Let's digest, digest and digress. Let's not digress. We're just going to digest. We had Seth Fighter on Llama three years in the making. Got to talk to him about blade bait fishing. He gave everybody a great tip. If you're blade bait fishing, man, change those hooks out. Throw your split rings in the trash and tie yourself some braided loops. Watch his YouTube vid. I'm, I'm not doing that. You ain't doing that. I'm doing it. I got time. I got time this winter. I, do, I, just don't, I don't understand. What do you mean? So if you think about it on a blade bait, all right, let's let's look at this blade bait, and let's Break look at it down the real quick. Let's look at the mechanics of a treble hook, any treble hook bait for that matter. So as I start to rotate this treble hook, I get like a one and a half rotation, and then the fish can use the half ounce blade bait or three eighths to throw the hook. With braid, you get infinite numbers of rotations, infinite. It's the same concept when I use. An assist hook, you know, the saltwater assist hooks that are tied with braid as a trailer hook on a spinner bait or a buzz bait. When I've hooked a fish with just the assist hook, which is way smaller, it's like a size one, in his chin, outside, on the top of the head, none of the fish have thrown it. Hmm. Because it can spin infinitely before, before that fish can use the weight of the bait as leverage or in Canadian Bro, terms, the, the handful of fish I lose in a day, I ain't worried about. Well, maybe you lose a handful of fish, but if money's on the line and you're blade bait fishing, braid's the answer. 
medium light rod also surprised me. No, it doesn't me. I, I it surprised not... me. I've never thrown it on medium light. I've always thrown it on medium, not a medium light. Now you're not doing that for largemouth, I don't think. Um, why? It's a treble hooked bait. Maybe. Worth trying. Anyway, good discussion, good conversation, good food for thought. Certainly worth trying and seeing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have lost plenty of blade bait fish. Maybe they were snagged. I don't know. But you know how it goes. Pitching on poles. Good food for thought. I liked it. Anyway, we had the llama on. It was great. It was really cool to hear him say, yeah, man, fish eat baits that they haven't seen before like they never seen it. That's very cool to me. Speaks to my my soul, the Bass Lab, hacking baits up, showing them something different. Pretty cool. Yeah, what kind of not? So, <clears throat> so Seth, did he do a video on that? Yes. Okay. So I was just there, trying to look that up. Yeah, I said that earlier. There's lots of YouTube videos out there on that topic, and uh, certainly for Seth. A lot of guys that throw the big swim baits that are like, you know, multiple ounces, um, there are guys that do the whole braid loop thing. Interesting. Man. It's just, I mean, think about it. If you did it on all your crankbaits, good God, that would take time. But if money was on the line, because you're not really losing, you know, how many how many plugs are you going through in a day? So you think it's good to put that on your crankbaits too? Think about it. If you're snapping grass, I mean, hell, man, with a rattle trap, are you going to lose a rattle trap in grass? I mean, if it works for a blade bait, would it work for crankbaits? Good question to be asking. Food for thought. Yeah. For all you treble hook dudes out there, yeah, CCRR, he he he's, I see his comments. Yep. He what does he say? He wants to talk reset and gold coins. Okay, well I'll We're not doing I'll, that. Uh, why don't you hit Travis up after the show? Uh, <laughs> no, we ain't doing it right. now. I got to go offshore tomorrow, bud. All right, bud. Listen, good luck. Uh, happy hunting. And uh, we'll talk next week and use the off time to at least discuss the next uh, level of guests and a show schedule. We've got a lot of commentary from the viewers. They were excited tonight. We didn't even promote Seth. Um, hey, guys, like and share. There's only 21 likes. How many likes do we have right now, Travis? I'm sorry. I froze my YouTube. I only see 16. I It's always lower. Oh, shoot. I forgot to do that. <sighs> well, I think I have to refresh because... Uh, Anyway, hey, guys, would you mind if you're still watching? Throw a like down there, man. This is Seth. And share it. Share it, please. Like and share tonight. It's the llama. Oh, thank you, Dale. 77. Good show tonight. Tom knew he was coming on. Get Matt Robertson. All right. Who else do you guys want to see? Talk, talk to us. Who's the next one you want to see? 85. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Slumpy. Thank you, Tom. Um. Jake Blaha says, of course, it's a it's a benefit to all travel. 88 likes right now. We appreciate that. All right. Oh, thank you, Waves. 89. Sorry I missed it, guys. That's okay. Good show. Johnson Brothers. No way Travis could get the Johnson Brothers on. Ah, it's just not happening. Would you ever be able to get the Johnson Brothers on? How about Gussie? He's another. He's a fucking classic champion, right? You can have Gussie on. I don't care. I'll get them all on. Get Gussie. It's a smallmouth crush. When do you want him on? And anytime you want to invite him, we stream oh. every Monday night. I know it would be great. Zona Gussie. It takes you this long to DM somebody. Hey, my crazy co-host, who's a largemouth head, like idolizes you guys. Would you mind coming on the show? Okay. Dude, we got we got good great viewers. They you know, and I promise to be a better moderator next time. As long as oh, will you start talking. Will you step it up, Eric? I, dude, I I do my best. I'll make sure that I get the questions answered cuz everybody had a ton of questions. I mean, we didn't have Seth on very long, you know, we sucked up 30 minutes of duck talk. Mm. Samada Spates was like, "Oh, here we go." People were just like now nah, there's a lot of people that like the duck talk too, man. You got some hunters on here. I just made a uh, a video about the best 
Never mind. <laughs> About what? Nothing. Okay. I don't know where I'm going with anything. <laughs> we'll talk. 97 likes. Yes. Share it too. Share it too. Share, share, Let's share. Let's get to 100, guys. Come on. Come on. You could do 100 for travel. Hit like button, Kent. Aaron. Yeah. Eat. All you dudes. How many we got watching now, Travis? What's it say? The comments earlier in the show between Gino and Pete. Do you see that? They were duking it out. They were. Yep. True. We got Jamie Bruce Austin <laughs> back on Zona. <laughs> Jimmy. Uh, I saw comments. Pete versus the world. Johnson's brothers are too stuck up. Pete Jablowski. Uh, let's see who else. Johnson brothers, Matt, Matt Robertson, um, Matt Robertson. That's several votes for Matt Robinson. It's a lot of Matt Robinson fans. Yeah. A lot of Matt Robinson fans, man. Come on. Come on guys. Who else? Who else do you want to, who else do you want to see? 99. We need one more. Ick, MJ. That's a, a negatory. If you do get either one of those, on, I don't even know who the second guy is. Eddie Bravo. We need Evie Bravo on. You enjoy that show, bro. Okay. Can't do it. Uh, Randy Banscope. Taylor Swift just fumbled the ball. <laughs> Somebody's watching Monday Night Football. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Pinhook Fishing says, Will Clute. Don't think that will happen. You won't see Randy block it. That would be crazy. Gray Buck. Okay. Still, still hanging at 99. Dang. Travis, can you like your own show? I don't think so. Let me try. Try it. Click that button. Did it work? I'm trying, bud. Okay, bud. It's not as easy as you think. What do you mean? Just watch it. You click the heart. Or it's thumbs not, up on me. I don't have that on my uh, screen, dude. Uh, I guess you can't like it. You're you're oh, we're at a hundred. Your wife Here. can like it. You can get your wife to like it. I got it. <laughs> Boom. All right. Great job. Thank you, guys. Gray Buck. That's two votes for Gray Buck. Ron Boyce. Don't know who that is. Oh. Ken Golub. I mean, you could get some of the guys that you did. We the, should uh, get Ken. I want to get Ken on. Yep. I do. I want to fish with him in his little rowboat. Yeah. He's uh he's the what what lake specialist? Uh Does finger he... lakes. Yeah, finger lakes. That motherfucker. It's... He don't smile. He don't. He don't take any prisoners. Wow. And he just wins tournaments. Damn. In a rowboat. I don't know what he does, man. <laughs> All right. Then I think you get him on. I know. I thought about him the other day. I'm like, I got to call that guy. Do it. Write these down. Put it, write it right down. Know I, your big I'll, list guy. I'll reach out to him soon. Soon, dude. Like, do it now. Yeah, he won't give up the juice, but we'll get him on. All right. That's cool. All right. Probably Sounds the best angler on the Finger Lakes that I know of. Wow. That's saying something. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Now, you know, I don't know how big these tournaments are that he's fishing, you know. Right. Handful of boats, but. Right. He don't mess around. No. Hell no. He Good knows deal. I'm glad. He needs to stay over there at the Finger Lakes. That's right. That's right. Good deal, man. Who did the Waypoint heist? I don't. I don't know the details, but I think it, it involves Boyd Duckett and somebody else. Hmm. Oh, Ju Joe Lucarelli. Yeah, Joe moved, though. Did he? Yeah. Hmm. Trusty, right, who Rusty. Else? Who else? Dude, I got a whole list of them, man. I'll send you a list. You can we'll start see. reaching out to people, too. Yeah, apparently Seth would have come on if I just DM'd him. 
you know? All right. All right. All right, hang out for a second as you wrap up the show. I got I got a question to ask for you. Starks, that's it. Starks is the waypoint stealer. I don't know. I don't even know who that is. Jeremy Starks. I don't know. We're not starting rumors on this channel. No way. Adrian Avina. 100% facts. That's right. All right, cool, man. All right, wrap it up, bud. Hang out with me for a second. I what? got a favor. I have a favor to ask. Just two minutes after the show. Don't oh, hurt. after the show we have to after talk? After the show. Yeah, we do. Just a minute. It's going to be quick. All right, bud. All right, do the do the outro, dude. What do you got? All right, great guys, show tonight, yeah, Krabs. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go ahead, bud. Now you're all caught up in the comments. Don't get distracted. Okay, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Go ahead, Travis. As you were saying, see you on the water. <laughs> Joe, we already gave the, did the giveaway. Yeah, Joe, what the heck? Come on, Joe, you never participate anyways. Yeah, Joe. Zombeck, just because you beat Travis in Matter Woman Creek one time, don't be like bucking up on him. Dude, I, I idled past him. He thought I was like trying to take his water or something. Figures. Way to go, Joe. Starting rumors about Travis on this channel. That's right. <laughs> What's that hat you're wearing, anyways? Huh? What's that hat? Is that that uh, Tug Life? Keep grinding? No, it's Tug Life. Keep Tug keep Life? On. Tug Life, bro. Yes. It's like this a tugboat? No, it's this sticker on a hat. Oh, okay. The Tug Life, bro, with the little tattoo. Yeah, man. That's it. Yeah, bud. Don't you know? All right, man. Man, a lot of people want to talk about Antarctica. I know. Well, maybe you'll do a private stream for people and charge $9.99. <laughs> That's the way to do it. You've done the research, guys. Who would be willing to pay $9.99 a month to listen to Travis on his separate YouTube channel called Conspiracy Crush? I just want to hear nine ninety nine to listen to him. Well, now we have to wait for the uh, responses to come in. Steve Hardy's in. You got one <laughs> viewer so far. <laughs> oh man! All right, uh, Thanksgiving talk. No, no, Pete, that's not you. He didn't, Pete didn't. Say, I don't think that's a yes from Pete. I'm not sure. Faith first says nobody. Wave current size, no. How that definitely you? is bumpy, but I don't have a yes. No, it I, I, nah. Just no, Google but... Antarctica. Tom says you do your own research, apparently. You got one so far. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you'll get a lot of personal attention. He will answer all your questions. Pizza, yes. <laughs> now you got two. Uh -huh. All right. Two people. That's 18 bucks a month you'll be earning, Travis. Okay. Yeah. Another 200 a year. That research is paying off so far. Big. Hayden Green is a hell yeah. Now you got three. Smallmouth Junkie says no. Now you got $27.99 a month. No, you're up to $29.99. <laughs> Rogan says he better look out. Travis, start that podcast. Darius is passing. We got three, though. Three takers Darius so far. Passed? Come on, Darius. Yeah, he wants to talk fishing, bro. He's a crankbait dude. All right. Yeah, man. Come on. All right. Pete wants to see the uh, the PowerPoint presentation. But, Pete, you have to pay to see that because Travis isn't <laughs> going to take the time to do the PowerPoint on the mathematics of it all unless no, he gets Pete, paid. Pete ain't paying. We know Pete ain't paying. <laughs> I could afford it. So. <laughs> right. I have I mean, that's not even a question. You got three. All right. That ain't bad. That's a good start. It's a little seed. You know what I mean? 
Yes. Okay. It's cracking me up, actually. <laughs> of course. Yep, yep. All right, cool. When it hits 10, I may jump on, Tom says. <laughs> you got three. You got seven more to go, and then you got your 11, you because guys. Tom will jump on. Second mortgage is Star's Conspiracy Beats Dream. MJ. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right, man. Good show. So stoked you got Seth on. Seriously, thank you. And in the season of Thanksgiving, I am thankful for all the viewers here and uh, you, bud. You've been rich. You know, my there's life. like 30 regular people that are like at least. I don't know what that means. There's way more than 30 regular people. No, like 30 hardcores. Maybe. No, there's more than 30 hardcores. Right. How do I'm we just get gonna... all of them in one place at one time? You mean to like I have want... a party? Picture this. Yes, I want like a uh, yeah, a Saturday morning, nine o'clock. Okay. It starts. Okay. We got tackle. We're playing with our rods. People are pulling up. Where's the location? My house. Oh, calcium. Yeah. Totally down for that. Joe pulls up. Zomback pulls in. Tom Pavlock. Steve pulls up. JP. Darius. Gino. Gino and, and Jody are hanging out. I mean, MJ. Steve Hardy. Man, I'm just going to go down the list. Let's see. Uh, Pete Jablowski shows up. Andy B for sure. Well, Smallmouth junkie. Fucking wieners and hamburgers and. Yeah, Slumpy Grumpy, Faith Frank First Fishing, beers. Wave Currents and Ice, Andy V. Yeah, oh everybody. Oh, my God, dude. I mean, you're kidding me? <laughs> Doug Stewart. Well, I'm just going, man. There's these. These are. I'm still looking at all these comments. Uh, I'm missing lots of people. I got to go back to the beginning. Let me start from the top. I'm just going to the top of the comments. Juice Newton. <sighs> Who else am I missing? I'm missing lots of I'm people, dude. Park on like Jig Kent Squad, Cuda, Kent man. Are you Kevin. kidding me? Kent. I, you just got to write them down. You just got to look, man. That's a lot of people. That would be fun as hell. I'd come. How, could, how do we get MJ over here all the way from fucking Seattle or wherever he lives? I guess you just have to fly him in, bro. I ain't flying <laughs> in, people. <laughs> but how do we get it? Wouldn't it be cool? Pete could do it. That'd be my. <laughs> Pete could fly everybody in. Pete, you down for that, dude? Pete could do a roast. He would be the guy that you want. You would want Pete to roast you. It would be savage. Oh. Kentucky. Mike Long. <laughs> yeah, we'll get him on. <laughs> Man. Yep. Yeah. Right. Pete, 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 Someday. if you fly, if you fly people in, you get to roast them. That's a, that's a dream. I know, dude, make it happen. What would it take to make it happen? Well, we can't pay for people to come. They would just have to show up. Could we just do a, uh, There's no uh, way I, it wouldn't be right. Like if we did a show and MJ couldn't be there, it wouldn't be right. Right. It's true. Like everyone would have to come. Is there a way we could do a virtual show? Like, how many people oh, could you have? We could do that, where we could have everybody. Why don't we just, just do like, that? They yeah. all just, we have like a, like 80 people on a stream. That'd be cool. It would be, I mean, like, I don't know how that would go. Like, um, maybe you keep rotating. Like, here's the thing you do is like, so you ha if there's 80 people that want to come on and these are the windows where they click the link and come on, would that make it sense? Be hard. Like, well, no, just saying it's, it's multiple. Everybody tunes in at eight o'clock on Mondays. So we would just have, we'll just have a big, let me figure what, that out. Why don't we rotate it? So like this group comes on at eight o'clock. No, this group comes on at 8.30. So how tiny would everybody be on this little screen? Tiny. Very tiny. Little and box. Just, 
we just let it roll? Why sure. not? Okay, I'd love to see their faces. It'd be awesome to meet people, man. I mean, I see people on Instagram. And if people do little videos on Instagram, you know who they are, right? Yeah, Tom goes, I got an idea. We'll call it the Small Mouth Crush Open. Yeah, Very I know. Cool. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> canceled it this year. It's canceled for next year, right? No, uh, JP wants me to do it. Okay, so you're going to do he it? He wants me to do three of them. Oh, you're going to do a tournament series now. Small Not Mouth Crush series. Open. No points. He wants me to do a June uh august and like in october okay okay yeah yeah slumpy saying you could do it as a viewer appreciation on fix as a start because you know how many of our subscribers you have you give them you let them eat first right kind of thing then you do your public one yeah we'll think about that it would yeah, be you think of about it it's kind of cool to mix it up for 2024. See, these are the things we get to when we actually we actually talk. You know, I know you're on your duck hunting vacation. I don't know how long that's going to last, but you know, at some point this the winter time is for planning, right? At some point the party's got to end. What does that mean? Oh, you mean like you can get back to work. My videos. Party's and, end. Yeah. Well, you know, you had a big year, dude. You moved. You bought a lot of new gear, you set it all up, you're learning stuff, so, you know, we give you we give you a pass, bro. All right. Time to come back strong, bro. Let's roll. All right. All right. Stuff, you want to talk? Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. And until next time. We'll see you guys on the water. All right. Nice. All right. Good. Hold on. That, bro. Yeah. I know. <laughs> oh, you can tell? Yeah. I have a little sign that comes up on the says this broadcast has ended and it ain't there yet. You just All don't right, want to go, go, do you? All right, do it. We will. We'll see you guys. Yeah. See you guys. All right. All right. We are done. All right.